And hello, good afternoon all you amazing people. I just noticed the weirdest thing. I was watching that count. I've never noticed it before. Maybe if you've been here before you can tell me. But what is it, as it was counting down the minutes and the seconds, if the second had a zero in front of it, it didn't show the zero. That was very bizarre. I've never noticed that before. I don't know if there was an update or what was going on. That was so weird. I don't know. I tried tweaking it. We'll see what happens with that. We do have a puppy with us today. Mr. Jackson crashed on the floor. All chilling out. And I'm, I am going to fix that camera. I swear to you guys. I'm going to fix it. It's going to happen. Hopefully by next week. I'm not certain yet. I'm working on that. Got some other cool stuff coming up as well. In the coming weeks. Um, I'm going to be adding quite a bit of production quality to the to the stream. And uh, hard life, right? And, you know, a few other things. Hopefully some other stuff's going to get straightened up. I'm going to be able to stream regularly. I'm starting early today. Because, unfortunately, I, there's, there's a high possibility that I'm going to get called into work midnights in about less than three hours. Not supposed to, but it could still happen. So I wanted to try to get in here and get this stuff knocked out. Uh, before that happened, I'm going to turn that music down a touch. I know it's already quiet for you guys, but it's like screaming in my ear so today we went we did shelter pictures i actually had a lot more on my list than we got i had about 13 or 14 dogs on my list but man we had a bunch of shy ones today and uh, a couple that were in isolation meaning they're being evaluated for one reason or another um but we got six i believe it was and some really great dogs there today you're always surprised because as people, we kind of have this, I don't know, seems like most of the time this preconceived notion when we see a dog about how it's going to be or act or behave, just kind of by its appearance. You know, you might see a little young frontal puppy and think, oh my gosh, he's going to be cute, he's going to cuddle. You might see some big old burly beat up pit bull and think, oh my gosh, if I go near that dog's going to kill me. Which actually can be totally the opposite. Dogs are so unique in their behavior and their personality. It has a lot to do with the way they were raised. And also the fact that they're in a shelter, which is a very scary place. But, man, there's some great dogs up there today. And we're going to hop over over to it and see what we can get accomplished. I don't have, unfortunately, I don't have a dog cam on this scene. I should add it. I don't know where I would add it, though. I mean, the camera's in a bad enough place. I need to do something with the scene in general. I need to find out why in the hell OBS won't even capture uh, Lightroom pro properly because if you know, this is just a desktop capture you notice I'm moving this around It's not capturing the, the app directly like it does with everything else And I know it's probably because of the the way that Adobe products do GPU acceleration And I think they've got it kind of modularized so that part of it's rendered off GPU and part of it's not I, I Don't know something weird goes on there And we can't see the pictures properly half the time in the middle whenever we have it uh, capturing the window directly. But as always, uh, we are going to go in and stack these together into the dog's photographs. There was a couple of them we did not get the card for because they didn't have it there. Um, Athena here, for instance, did not have a card available for me to get a picture of that. But I know it's Athena, so I can sort that out here in a bit. Um, not edit, I want stacking. And again, because I'm, I'm capturing Lightroom the way I am, I realize that sometimes the menus will go off your screen. And I apologize for that. But until we can find a better way to capture it, unfortunately, we're kind of stuck with it. I may possibly be changing my streaming software within the next bit. I don't. I hate to say when because I have to do a lot of work and testing before it comes to that, but it might be changing because um, I've just I've been having some things happen that I do not like with my current stream software. So hopefully we can avoid that in the future by moving to a different platform. This is, I believe her name was India. Yes, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. I'll have to check here. But there, this, she didn't have a kennel card either. And you talk about a challenge. Oh, my goodness. 
She was a pain in the butt. She did not want to sit still. She wanted to mouse the leash. She always wanted me looking the other way. I bet it took us every bit of 15 to 20 minutes just to get the pictures that we got. And there's not any real great ones to select from. But, but you'll see that. They're coming up. And this was our four-month-old puppy, Kathy. Really sweet. We also fought a little bit with the sun today. Um, it was kind of playing peeping Tom with us. In one minute and out the next. So we'll have to see what became of all that. Hopefully we still did all right. Because like I've mentioned before, I, it, it's hard to, to really judge that on the fly. You kind of check out the back of your camera as you go, but it doesn't always work out that well to do that. So here's the six puppies. And we're going to start off with Sam's card, and we're going to go ahead and apply our lens corrections to that, which, as many of you may know by now, is my Tamron 7200. 2.8. Beautiful lens. Beautiful. Love that lens. It is my go-to for almost everything. We are cropping one-to-one. -one. Um, again, as most of you know, our shelter application that we use requires a one-by-one. -one. I'm not a fan. And I like to complain about it every stream until it gets fixed. <laughs> it probably never will get fixed. At least not anytime soon. And I think that's really all the settings I want to save from that. This time, though... I was editing some commercial photos before. That's all open. Um, I'm going to go ahead and copy the crop size this time. Just to have it. I mean, we're going to do it anyway. And we'll have to move it, but it doesn't matter. White balance treatment profile, which white balance doesn't really matter either. We're using the default one the way it was shot, which is daylight balance. Uh, we'll leave the lens corrections on there because that's the most important part that we want to copy over. And we're going to find, again, three shots. We want a face shot, a body shot, and some kind of personality shot. Um, or at least we try. Some dogs have a personality, but it's very hard to capture in a picture. And some dogs have way too much personality, and you can't get any picture, but... Uh, and this dog was super... Just a... Fan. You wouldn't know it by looking at him. He's a little bit scruffy. Um, he needed a bath. I say he. Was it a he? It was a he. This is Sam. That's right, Sam. Sam I am. Green eggs and ham. Hopefully I don't get a... infringement over that. But anyway. Um, super, super sweet dog. Leashed really well. Would sit. Didn't pull. It was so awesome. And it's these kind of dogs that get overlooked. Um, at the shelters. People just kind of, like, again, they kind of glance at the dog and move on. Glance at the dog and move on. If you didn't actually interact with this dog, you would probably have no idea that this six-year-old dog was such a sweetheart. Um, and that's why, I mean, you know, I said when we opened up, you, you just don't know. What a beautiful picture there. You don't know until you interact with them. And even then when you do that at a shelter, it, it's very hit and miss. Uh, because they can be wound up from sounds and smells and other dogs. What a cutie. Um, looks like we got quite a few good face shots, so we're going to skip the face shot for the moment. We're going to look for our body shot. Kind of reduce things that way. That's probably our best body shot. I'm not a fan of the tree growing out of, out of her back. His back. I've already forgotten. I'm scatterbrained today. His back, yes. Uh, I don't know why we didn't get a better body shot of him, because he was really chill. He didn't care. He wasn't in his kennel, so he was all about it. This one... I mean, that could work. and It's not really enough, I don't think. Of course, it's not much more than that one. That one is, though. That That's a really... We're going we're gonna to see what happens here. We're just going to see what happens. Paste those on there. And it should have pasted the crop as well. Again, with the copy and pasting from... I don't know what is up with it. It doesn't work right half the time. 
or maybe me checking a box would also be of benefit. And develop settings, paste settings, develop settings, paste settings. Thank you. It just saves us an extra click as long as we don't have to click twice to apply the damn thing. So another example of why one-to-one -one aspect ratios are terrible for puppy pics. And we'll edit our hand and stuff out. We do the leash. And one star that one. So that's our body shot. Kind of a personality shot. I really like the sitting. I also love that shot. I think I'm going to go with that one just because I like it so much. We may use that as our face shot. Ears down, tongue out. Pet me! Pet me! They're so damn cute. So, yeah, we're going to... I'm going to paste these on here. See what kind of a... You're kidding me. Why, 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 why? Thank you. Probably gonna leave that one really close to where it is. Because I don't want to crop into it too much. I'm gonna auto that. I know it's gonna pull that per. Oh, I actually it didn't. I could have swore it would pull up on that really hard. It didn't do too bad. It did a little bit. On the whites down a little bit. It's definitely a chocolate color. We'll have to go in and we'll edit and get rid of some of these hairs and stuff. Can't do much about the matte. Well, we could, but it would be a, very, be a bunch of busy work and I don't think it would do much good for the dog. So. so we got personality shot, a body shot, and we need that face shot. So we're going to go with this one. How many times do I have to paste the same thing over and over till it works? But, or at least if they hotkey it, it would make it easier. But to my knowledge, there is not a hotkey for that. Pull that one out. Let's pull the shadows back down a bit. Oh, come on now. Maybe he wants to go a mile or nowhere. Yeah, we'll edit that stuff out. What a cutie. So, face shot, personality shot, body shot. Done. And done. Now with Athena. Athena was kind of a busybody, as you can see here. Getting her to calm down long enough to get a picture was like... I just kept snapping, hoping that I would just catch a spot when she would sit still. And I took a bunch of her because she wasn't doing it. Like, that one's even a little bit soft. Um, but you get the dogs like that sometimes. They just... She's a Mastiff mix, I'm sure. I couldn't find her kennel card, so we'll have to see. But And I need to turn... Let me turn the ceiling fan on. I'm already starting to fry in here. Bear with me a second. Sorry for bashing my mic around. But man, it's starting to cook in here. Okay, let's see. So that's kind of a cute shot. So is that one's pretty much the same shot. Well, we might see which one's better. Um, we did get a face shot. Kind of a goofy face. Super sharp, though. Did we get any other face? That looks like the only straight-on face shot we got. So we're not going to have much of a choice there except to use it. So we're going to develop. So let's see if we got to do it twice. Paste settings. Hey, we got to do it once that time. Crop this down. Get that cute face in there. Go ahead and auto that because it's super bright. It's not bad. It's still a little brighter here than I'd really like. But take what you can get. And I will take it. And looks like my Discord has taken a crap. Possibly. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with it. Um, actually, I think I might know what's going on with it. But regardless, I think we'll be all right. I'll scoot that over some more. 
I don't like her looking out of the picture like that, but being so close, I hate not having her face more centered in the picture. Face shot. We did have some body shots, but she's in all shadow for it. That one's probably the best one. It's not very soft either. It's pretty good. We'll have to crank up the exposure just a little bit, I think. Just so it doesn't look quite so dark. It's not going to look very close to her face shot either. For that reason, I try to generally get the dogs in all of the same sort of light setting. At least each dog so that their pictures together don't look really screwy. Um, but you don't always get it. You got to do what you got to do. That's a little brighter. That's a little better. Because when you look at the face shot... And sorry, I know my phone is being loud, but because I might get called in, I have to leave it on something I'll hear. Because with these headphones on, I don't hardly hear much of anything. It has to be pretty loud. Mr. Clever has come online, it seems. And body shot, head shot. And now that personality shot. It looks like a lot of them were sitting... None of these really say much about her, though. They're all pretty basically the same, just looking one way or the other. So I guess we'll just look for the one that looks the sharpest. That one's pretty much spot on. That one is as well. I think I want to try this one. Develop settings, paste. Mm, oh, I want to handle that. It's kind of a weird body position. I'm going to try it like that. Oh my goodness, this is what I mean by sometimes uh, Lightroom just goes full mental. Doesn't really know what's going on. Especially in high contrast situations. It's not bad. I think that'll work. Why that's taken to all of a sudden advancing to the next picture when we rate it. Headshot, body shot, personality shot. Athena is completed. Might knock this out pretty quick today. Um, if my work doesn't call. We're probably going to do some Elite tonight. I haven't played it since last week. Kind of missing it. Got some stuff I want to straighten out and catch up on. So we may do that tonight yet. We'll see. Again, if I don't get called into work. Which I'm not feeling very good about. Because uh, well, another guy that works on my shift is supposed to be working it. But he seems to have a bit of an issue showing up for work here lately. So my boss told me when I left work um, last night, he said, I hope I don't have to call you. That's what he said. <laughs> so like I said, I and I don't think it's, uh, I don't think we'll be able to stream tonight. I'm, I'm sh I just know he's going to call me. This is Bobby. I'm trying to remember Bobby's personality. I think Bobby was pretty, pretty laid back, pretty chill. Beautiful dog. He was younger too, wasn't he? Two years old. Cattle dog. I found a lot of those um, kind of working dogs make pretty good dogs. They're pretty intent on satisfying people and doing what, what they need to be doing. 
I do think we had trouble getting a face shot of him, which it looks like. I'll probably use that one, maybe. I don't know. I kind of like the, the depth of field on that one. Which we run 5.6 again, as always. I, it's typically what I run. Um, I just I like it because it gives me enough room to get the dog, a moving dog, at least in focus, and and enough uh, shallow enough that I can knock out the background, even if they're fairly close to it. Hmm. Face shot. Now one's. Tell you what, he's looking pretty straight at me in that one. That's a good body shot, though. But I've got better body shots. See, that's a better body shot, but because I was too close, it, it won't crop. That one will. And that's not bad. Well, we're going to go for it for now. And this is a pretty big crop. Which won't really matter in the end when it comes out because of how low res it is, but you can run into some weird problems and anomalies doing this, so... You know, try to always think in advance about whether or not you're going to be cropping into the picture. And try to get most... You should always shoot for the, for the image. Pre preferably. Always shoot for your intention. But because it, it's so luck of the draw a lot of the times on these dogs I kind of I sort of shoot with intention and then it generally ends up being something else used for something else and that's not bad put that leash out so we got a head shot and body shot I like this for personality shot I, th I just I really like that I don't care that his legs are chopped the way they are but I like the, his attention here this isn't bad, but his mouth is closed on that one. I don't find that as appealing. This one's got his eyes closed. Actually, we can just remove that. That one's kind of cute as well. It's actually a pretty good shot. Sweet body shot. The, the gill long. Thank you so much for the follow. I really appreciate it. it. means a lot to me, which we're actually very close to our follower goal. If you look in the bottom left, it's a little bit off on the bottom left. If you look at the top, just above this video, it shows you there. I think that's 49. 50 is our goal. And if by some chance we do hit that today, which the odds are high, I don't know if we can do the Jackson thing today. We might have to wait until next Sunday to do it because, again, I'm afraid I'm going to get called into work here shortly. But yeah, once we hit 50... Jackson, 140 pound Great Dane, which is located right there. <laughs> um, it's going to sit on my lap, so that's going to be curious. I just, I, well, he'll love it. He always tries to sit in my lap anyway. Um, but you'll just see how, how big this damn dog is. I mean, I'm not a big guy. I'm a pretty thin guy, but I'm also almost six foot tall. So you'll see how big he is whenever uh, whenever that happens but again really appreciate it. it means a lot thank you thank you so we have the face pick we have and that's such a good photo I hate cutting his tail off though to crop that I wish I would have been further away I'm gonna paste this on here just to see what happens Pace settings. Well, you don't get the tail, but I think I can live with it because it's a real. It's, I love his pose. Got the catch light right. Got the focus right. Background's okay. Could be a little bit better. But the background's okay. I think I'm just gonna run with it. I think I'm just gonna run with it. It's a little bit dirty. I don't remember him having any brown on him. I think he's just flat out dirty. But he was a really cool dog as well. So we've got our body shot. We have our face shot. And we do need the personality shot. And man, I just, I'm loving this picture. I just love it. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna paste some settings on here. See what we can get out of a one by one on this. Paste settings. And you know what? I'm even gonna do it the right way. That's a good crop on that picture. That's a beautiful crop on that picture. I don't know if a lot of people would agree though. We're gonna pull this over. And what I'm doing here is I'm lining up the third line with kind of his leg. Because your, your primary focus is going to go like down here. I don't know, for me it kind of makes a backward C shape. See, that to me is not as appealing as this is. I think I'm going to run with that. I'm leaving it there. That's my preferred crop. And what a beautiful puppy. And we'll, we'll get rid of that leash here in a bit. We'll head over to Photoshop here in a bit, and we're going to get rid of that. So we got his personality shot. We've got his body shot, and we have his face shot. Not my favorite. We had to crop way the heck into that. But it's the closest thing I can get from him looking at the camera. Because most dogs... Actually, we got one here, too. Most dogs... Oh, no, we nailed that. The focus... Once they see that flash pop once or twice, they're done with you. They're, they're not going to look at you again. I have a squeaker I use. And I can usually get one or two squeaks out of it. So I always try not to use it until I have no choice and I want to get their attention. And that will usually get me at least one face shot. Um, and everybody did. All the dogs did pretty good today. I think I'm going to do that one instead of this one. I think I'm going to try that. Um, all the dogs did pretty good today. Except for one. Um, she was kind of a being a knucklehead. I say that she 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 was super nervous, really pacey. Didn't want to sit still when she did. I don't want to copy those. When she did, uh, she wanted to lay down. So it was hard. You know, you try to present the animals in a way that's that's not only fair to them but makes them look good. And if somebody it was a Great Pyrenees, if somebody you know was looking for a Great Pyrenees, that she would be a candidate. Because that's the objective here, just to get these dogs adopted. Get them out there and get them adopted. So we want to show them off the best we can. We don't want to misrepresent, misrepresent them. That's a better face shot. I'm, I'm happier with that. Props a little bit. Goofy. Got big floppy ears. What a doll. We're going to go with that one for the face shot. I like it better. So face shot, body shot, personality shot. And that gets Bobby out of the way. This is the Great Pyrenees. This was Indy, I believe her name was. Look on my list here. Yeah, Indy. I'm trying to make sure she came out of the kennel I was thinking of. Um, man, what a what a turd! It was so hard to get pictures. Um, she didn't care. She was okay on a leash. But she didn't care for it, so she would lay down like that picture there. I don't think I actually got a picture of her mouthing the leash, but every time she had a chance, she was putting her putting the leash in her mouth that she obviously hasn't been on a leash very much. But she was such a doll, but man, she did not want anything to do with what was going on. And you could see her whole back end was all scraggly and scruffy. She came in in the 528. So she hasn't been there that long. That looks like one, two, not even three weeks yet. But she's still in A, which is the new run. That, that's, the, that's the kennel run where most of the new dogs come in at. And uh, they evaluate them, assess them, get them straightened up, get all their vaccinations and everything in line. And she's still lacking a little bit. And I don't know, I'm not, man, that's not flattering at all that tail end like that but that may be what we end up having to show because we don't editing all that up and making it look right and making it look the way I think it should look would be not only tough but create it's a lot of time that I unfortunately don't really have right now so maybe we'll just pick more flattering pictures in general really need a face shot doesn't even look like this looks like the closest thing to a face shot we even got thankfully I, I nailed the focus on it 
and she's lying down and her head's turned sideways. It's not going to be that flattering, but it looks like it's the only one we have to work with. Develop pace settings. And she was a great Pyrenees. I say mix. I find that a lot of time when dogs come into the shelter, they always say mix. It doesn't matter if they are or not. I, and I'm guessing that's because of proving bloodline or something. They don't go that far. I don't know. Every dog says mix. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. I mean, that's still cute. It's, it's a little dark. Pull those shadows up. Don't flatten it out too much. A little bit more contrast to make that alive. That's not bad. I mean, it could be worse. At least we got something to work with. That one we're not going to need, like, ever. So we're going to get rid of that. That's not going to be useful for anything. And again, you're seeing in, as I'm seeing them. I took the pictures, yes, but you never really know what you got until you get back. You're kind of shooting from your gut in most cases. It's, it's a really fast pace kind of thing. Man, that's too bad our rear end dog matted like that. I wish we would have had some sunlight on that. That would have been an amazing shot right there. That one as well, but we got more, a little more catch light in the eyes on that one. Here we don't have that other eye very well. There, they're both beautiful. Well, that one still could be usable, so I hate to get rid of it. We don't have much options for the body shot. We're probably, probably going to have to use this one. And I hate it with that matted stuff on her hind end. But... She's even got a bunch of stickers in her tail. She's been there for a while. I don't know why she's still kind of in that shape. Because we could do that way as well. Kind of gets rid of it. There's really not, other than the stickers being her tail, there's not much in this part. It's awful. Uh, let's paste it on here and see what we end up with. We might, we might still be able to get away with it. Go ahead and auto that up, and it still is not bright enough for me. Turn that up a little bit. Turn the highlights back up a hair. Turn the whites down. Yeah, the sun was playing peekaboo today, like I said, so... It was kind of hit and miss on what we got and what we couldn't. I mean, that, that'll work. I'm not going to crop in any more. I'm still not a fan of that. I don't know. Maybe we'll change our mind by the time we get over editing it. We'll see. And which one of these am I going to use? I like that position better, but I don't like her eyes better. I like her eyes better here. But that whole laying down thing, that was definitely her personality. She was very timid and laid back. Most Pyrenees I found are. Great Pyrenees. Super chill. Maybe not all. At least all of them I've met have been. And but they get really big too. <laughs> really big dogs. Well, let's paste it on here. And see what we can do with it. And it's not going to one-to-one -one worth a poop. And I was afraid of that. That's why I hate one-to-ones. I wish the shelter didn't use those for the app. Man, that's that's a killer because that's beautiful, beautiful shot. Get off that. There you go. Love that. We can probably one to one this one just because we have more room to work with. And we had on the other one. I really can't crop up as far as I want though. So that's gonna let so much negative space below her. I don't think that really does it justice, but I'm gonna turn that up a little bit. We're gonna pull those shadows up a little. Not too much. Play with the con 
contrast to hair. Man. That's a shame. But it's still it's still cute. It's still her. Godly presence. I'm just scrolling through and saw cute dog. Sexy voice. Thought I'd stop by for a second and see what's going on. Well, thank you for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Um, I'll fill you in a little bit. You took the trouble to stop by. I'll take the trouble to let you know what's going on. My wife and I volunteer at a local county animal shelter. We are one of two photographer teams. Every Sunday, we go up there and we take you know, photographs of all the new intakes. Uh, it could be four or five dogs. It might be 20 dogs. It really depends on how many come in. We bring those pictures back. I edit them all up and I send them off to a lot of the volunteers and upload them to the shelter application that lets them get adopted. So instead of getting some really not so hot mug shots like this one, we instead get nice face shots, body shots, personality shots of them. Um, and we love doing it. We, we've been doing it now for over a year and a half. And it's it's such, it's so awesome. If you're an animal person in the first place and you get the opportunity to advocate for dogs like this or cats or whatever your animal preference is, it's, it makes you feel so damn good. It really does. So I always recommend, even if you don't take pictures, walking dogs spending playing with cats whatever your thing is um horses you go there are horse rescues you can talk to them go and talk with the horses brush them groom them there's always something but helping though the voiceless have a voice it's a big thing and it makes you feel really good but that's what we're doing and we do that every sunday we normally start at uh 3 p.m central Today I might get called into work, which my phone may be going off from time to time. I couldn't turn it off because I might be getting called into work. And I might end up having to go here in a couple hours. So I wanted to get on early and get this done. I have to get it done to get those beautiful puppy pictures out there. So again, thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. And make sure you hit that follow and you'll know every Sunday. We also play some games on here on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Or I'm sorry, Mondays and Tuesdays. It's such a weird schedule to have. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for supporting the channel. Um... Mondays and Tuesdays, we also stream. Mondays is kind of our variety day. Who knows what we'll play? Sometimes it's, a, it's just a simple variety thing. Tuesdays is our Elite Dangerous Day, which is one of our big games on the channel. A lot of my audience is Elite Dangerous players. I love that community. If you're not a gamer, that's cool. If you are and you don't know what Elite Dangerous is, stop by. Check it out. Um, great people show up for that. Um, but yeah, anytime. Let me know. So back to this here, I want to, I'm, I'm, and I will keep with you up with you guys as much as I possibly can, but I definitely want to get through these before I potentially get that phone call and they say, come on in and work that midnight. I've taught a number of people how to play elites. I've been playing for you. Awesome. Awesome. Well, glad to have another elite member in here. Um, there's so many great people. I love the elite community. Kind of quiet recently though, taking a break from it. Uh, they had the guardian guardian thing here, Louise. They have guardian fighters out now, apparently. Uh, or maybe they did, and I just finally seen one and realized it. Uh, Reaper, if you know who Reaper is, if you watch streams. Uh, Reaper and Empress. Reaper was uh, flying one yesterday. You want to talk about the coolest damn boost sound ever. That was nuts. They're really cool. Anyway, some people that come here today don't really come for the elite stuff or don't care about the games. Today's all about the puppies. And, uh, and again, when we do have our resident puppies, uh, one of them is actually with me right now. Uh, and let me find my cam for it. I'm still getting all this stuff in order. Uh, but this is Jackson. He's our almost three-year-old Great Dane Rescue. All three of our dogs are rescues. If you read down below, there's a little panel that says our puppies. And it tells you a little bit about them. I don't have pictures or anything there yet. My life has been insane. I've been working a dumb amount of hours. I think all that's going to end this month, though. So things should get better. It's been quiet because of the recent updates and upcoming updates being concentrated at new player experience. But yeah, back to the puppies. Yeah, it, and, and it was much needed. And I'm happy to discuss that. Uh, we might, if I don't get called in, I might stream some Elite later tonight. Um, again, not certain what we'll do tomorrow. Might even do Elite tomorrow. Definitely Tuesday. But hop back in. We can chat all about that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And you'll find here um, a lot of what we do is pretty chill. You know, it's not a big hype stream. It's not loud and obnoxious at least not sometimes <laughs> um, but if you like chilling you like watching you like conversating and we conversate about everything definitely welcome to come back and hang out uh, what were we on we got 
Did we finish Indy? I think so. We didn't mark that one though. And that's still a little bit dark. I don't really like it, honestly. I mean, you can pull the luminance on that green down a little bit. It's a little, got a little too yellow for me. That's better. That's, well, that one's yellow as hell as well. And generally with the way I work with my, I'm my own worst critic. I could sit here and jack with something forever. And I'll, it'll never be right. Not a lot of artists are that way. I'm just turning this one green. Knock down that one it's just a bit. Just to get it more in line with the other one. And these all go out low res anyway. No one will ever know. No one's a critic of this kind of stuff. Um, I do have... When was that? If KT, if you're in here, maybe you can remind me. When was it we did the... I showed off some of my studio work with animals. I don't know if you were here that day. I know you generally are working and whatnot. It's in one of my VODs. And, and there should be by playlist. If you go to my playlist, you can check out some of the past ones. I, I want to say it was last Sundays. Towards the end, I showed off some of my studio work. So if you're interested in seeing puppies in the studio... But I'm going to head out, be back sometime in the future. Kind of modern for a channel right now, so I should probably be paying attention to that. A bit rowdy right now. Will you go handle that again? I really appreciate you stopping by, hitting that follow, supporting the channel. It made a big deal to me, and we hope to see you back here pretty soon. Especially during one of our Elite streams. Alright, so face shot, body shot, personality shot. Not the hugest fan of how all those turned out, but I was really lucky to get her shots at all the way she behaved. She was she was just so hard to get shots of. She did not want to cooperate. Let's see, this was a four-month-old puppy, and he was actually really chill for only being four months old. You wouldn't have known it unless, uh, you know, I usually will read their kennel cards beforehand just to get an idea of age and, and whatnot. Kathy, shepherd slash, that means mix, basically. White and tan female. Not yet spayed. Will be. They don't. They. They don't adopt out any animals that are not spayed or neutered. And four months old. So still a puppy, but super chill. Really good. She wasn't a fan of walking out down the run herself, because there's a lot of. And, and I may have a lot of new viewers in here, so we'll kind of back up and say over, uh, go over what we do. When we volunteer at these shelters, at this shelter, in particular, this county shelter, and take pictures, there's three different runs, and each run has. I think it's around, I was kind of looking at that today. I want to say 50 kennels per run, and there's three of them. And uh, we go and take these pictures and, and try to get them. I don't, it's, it's, there's so much that goes on with these shelters. Until you work in them, until you get involved with them, it's, it was just oblivious to us. You know, we had no idea that all this stuff went on and that, you know, this is kind of how it handles. This is how dogs come in. This is why they come in. This is how they're handled when they get here. This is the quarantine they have to go through. Once they get through quarantine, they have to go through testing. Once they go through testing, they got to get all their, their vaccinations updated. They got to go to the veterinarian. It's crazy the amount of stuff that these shelters do to, to help these animals. And so that kind of strengthened us volunteering at the shelters uh, for the photography. I do, I do professional photography on the side. I guess you would say I don't do it full time. Um, but I do studio work and I do things like that. And man, when we got involved at the shelter, it was just, it was hands down one of the best things. Even if I didn't do any photography other than just for the animals, I would have absolutely done it all over again. Uh, we love our puppies. Uh, the three rescues that we have, super cool dogs. Two of them are really chill. They've been trained really well. We've had them for a little while. Jackson, however this guy <laughs> he is a handful he is a handful he is still in training great danes don't typically mature till they're around three years old and even that can fluctuate a little bit but we're working with it we're working with it and he's doing better he is he doesn't counter surf really anymore um he does still have a kennel that we put him in when nobody's here our other dogs do not just we're just afraid that he'll get into something or something he's not supposed to and they're so big 
they'll open doors by themselves. They can open cabinets, drawers, refrigerators, everything. You know, the other two, we have uh, Gracie, who's a, a Great Dane Black Mouth Kerr mix. And she's so damn sweet. And she's beautiful, absolutely beautiful dog. And uh, she's super chill. Cage, he, Cage, he's almost 15 years old, 14 years old. Well, I don't remember now. He's a German Shepherd Lab mix. And he's just kind of the old grumpy fart. He doesn't care for Jackson much because Jackson is so wound up. But I can talk puppies all day. Uh, if you have the opportunity to work for your local shelter, doing anything, walking them, helping feed them, looking after them, talking to them, reading to them, any interaction that, that these animals can get in these shelters is that much better of a chance they do of, of so being socialized and getting used to where they're at, not so freaked out about where they're at. It makes a big difference. So at four months old in this run that we're in, which is A, A is where all the new ones come in at. And you never really know with the new ones, they might have, they could have parvo, they could be sick, they could have the flu, they could have ringworms, they can have mange, they could have any, I mean, usually if they got something like mange, it's pretty visual and, and they'll make sure and quarantine them immediately. But you gotta be really careful with taking these pictures. And this, there was three puppies this puppy was on one side and there was three others on the other side. This one you never would have thought was four months old because usually four months old is my cutoff. If they're below four months old, they're too young for a lot of their vaccinations, so I won't mess with them and bring them outside of their kennels because then they can they have access to all these other germs that, that they might not be vaccinated for. Had I not looked, I wouldn't know he was four months old because he was pretty mature, pretty chill, kind of bigger for his size. And the other side was two much smaller puppies. And those guys were in observation and couldn't be moved, uh, couldn't be messed with. But he was so, he was really chill. He was he was a little bit timid. He didn't really want to walk out of his shelter. He was scared of all the other dogs barking and carrying on because they're in this shelter. They've got a bazillion dogs, just constantly, nonstop, and they they're in these little bitty pens, and they can't release that energy. So when another dog goes by, yeah, some of them go a little crazy. Not that that dog is that way though, and that's the misleading part. That dog might just be releasing energy because it has no other way to do it. Most of them don't have chew toys because it's unsanitary, and it's how the dog could get germ spread, potentially life-threatening stuff. So it's, you know, it's kind of a lose-lose situation or win-lose. It depends on how you want to look at it, but in order to protect the animals, you, especially in the new, the new intakes, you can't do a ton with them without jeopardizing their health or safety. At the same time, they're in these little kennels and some of them are house trained and you don't even know it. And by the time someone gets there to let them out, to, to examine them or to evaluate them, they might have been in there a day. And they might have, they might, so I've had, I've seen dogs hold, hold going to the bathroom for an entire day because their house broken. So when we do pictures, especially the new intakes, if we find out that, hey, we brought them out and they went to the bathroom for like three minutes straight, we let the staff know when we go back in and get ready to leave so they can note that that dog is house trained so that dog gets to go out regularly, more frequently. Um, but man, it's such a rewarding thing. And we love doing it. And the staff that's there, now I, I don't know for sure. I've not worked for another shelter, but the shelter that I work for has some of the most amazing staff and the most amazing volunteers. And I don't just mean in the world of dogs. I just mean good human beings that... Uh, I can't, I can't recommend it enough. Just love him. Love him. But this little boy, he's super cute. I don't know what he was doing there. It looks like he was shaking. We're going to delete that. I think. Did I just collapse that? No, I didn't. What just happened? Oh, I clicked the... I know what happened now. I clicked the button that I wasn't supposed to click. And that... See, that's the kind of face shots they get in the shelter. You know, because when they come in, they're just required as part of the process to take a picture. And uh, that's what they get. But we improve those a little bit. I try to, anyway. That's cute. Doesn't look like... Yeah, we kind of got a... Looks like a flat one was goofy with the flash on that one. It's not too bright. That's cute. Look. That'll work for a body shot, probably. Even those ears are back there. Oh, that one's even better. That'll work as a better body shot. That's cute. Now these here, I took for the sake of taking. I don't normally take pictures that has so much, that's my wife there, it has so much of her in the background because there's no way to edit that out. 
And I find it a little bit tacky on the picture itself. Personal preference, I know. But it was so damn cute, I had to take the picture. Because that, that was more of his attitude. He was kind of leaning up against her and a little bit insecure about it. But he's really sweet. So we got that shot that's kind of a face shot. That one. I never did, I don't think I ever did get him to look directly at the camera. Sort of right there. We can try that. We'll see if we can get the face shot out of this. Just because this is the one where he's looking the most at the camera. I don't like the light. It looks like the flash didn't go off right or something. And I use an on-camera flash, but in some instances I'm clicking that shutter so damn fast that the, it can't recycle fast enough and or recycles partially. And uh, it doesn't get the job done. But we can lighten it up a little bit here in post. Just a hair. That's not bad. Face shot. Let's see, we had some good body shots back here, didn't we say? I think it was that one that looks the best. So we'll see what we can do with it. He's got his tail tucked. She. She. Kathy was her name. Pretty sure. So that... You can bet somebody's going to ask, does that hot dog have a tail? I, I, I never understood the fascination with tails, but apparently that's a pretty pretty important ordeal. Because I get asked about it a lot. Does that dog have a tail? I don't know. I, sometimes I want to say, I don't know, is that the difference between you adopting them or not adopting them? <laughs> I don't get it. But I don't I mean, everybody has their own preference, I guess. It's just a shame. But that would be a determining factor. So, body shot. Head shot. Not the greatest head shot. Personality. Well. These are, that's kind of the best personality shot, I think. I mean, that one's kind of cute too, but it's, I don't, it's blurred. She's moving pretty quick. I'm running about 400. Even at running at one four hundredth of a second, I still got... A bit of motion blur on there. And we're in at 5.6. I mean, I could have opened it up some more, but then you have to then you squash your depth of field, and it's even harder to get them in there right, get their picture in focus properly. That one's just all out there. I don't know about that one either, being useful. I might go with that. Which that's the same shot, just full body. Let's see what the crop looks like on that. Uh develop settings, pace settings. Auto that. Hmm. You slide those shadows around a bit. Crop this a little bit. Imagine that music's a bit quiet for you guys. Not that it's really anything that fantastic as far as something crazy to listen to. All the music is by Justin Durbin of Edge and Music out of Austin, Texas, and I don't remember what state in California, or what state, what city in California. But we uh, feature a lot of his work on here. He's a great composer. I've been hanging around his work for a long time. And he gave me permission to use his music on stream, so we've been using it and very excited about it. Some really cool stuff. Headshot, body shot, personality shot. I don't like this pipe, we'll probably get rid of that in post as well. Get rid of that pipe. That's super distracting. Super distracting.
Why did that not keep scrolling? All right, collapse those. One more puppy. Makai, I guess is how you pronounce it. He was different. He He's like a... He, he's definitely got pit bull in him, but he was... He's almost like a pit bull bulldog mix or something. I mean, he doesn't really short nose, but... I mean, you'll see what I mean here. I, I don't know if we got a good body shot of him. Here we go. He's not very tall. He has really short legs, but he's got a full-on pit bull head. So I, I I don't know what in the world he's mixed with, but he's super stocky. I say he. Was it a he? I'm pretty sure this was a he. It says unknown, but I'm pretty sure it was a boy. Um, he was a little bit timid, but other than that, he was really cool. He was a really cool dog. Really enjoyed uh, getting his picture. And we didn't get the right crop on that. I need to paste those development settings. There we go. That's better. And did we, uh, let me go over and check. Where is my... I'm trying to find out. I think we might have hit 50. Maybe. Producer, no. Back. I don't want to hear myself stream. Because there's nothing sexy about that. We hit 50 followers. We are at 50 followers. And I know that's a little thing for a lot of people. But... For starting out only a little over a month ago, it's a big deal to me. And I really appreciate all the support you guys have done. So that means that next week, Jackson gets to smash me. So that should be fun. That should be exciting. Like I said, he'll love it. I'll love it too. I'll love him to death. I'll let him maul me for a minute. But yeah, I, again, today I'm afraid by the time I've got, because i got to readjust a camera and everything, get everything set up there so you guys can actually see it. And then by the time we do it, it's, it's probably going to take upwards of an hour just to get it going, to get it set up. So definitely by next Sunday, I will have everything set up and we will be doing that next Sunday. And I really appreciate that from everybody that supported me and helped me, helped me grow so quickly. It's been awesome. That's a pretty good face shot. That one's not... Eh, not a fan. Not lit very well. well I think that's going to have to be our face shot because that's, that's a really good one. That we a really good close-up of the face anyway. We'll paste these on here. And we'll try that again because apparently pasting is difficult. Paste. Thank you. I'm going to auto that up. Should pull it up some. And it did. And we might even slide those shadows up just a little bit more. And then throw in a bit more contrast. And I'm good with that. So there's our face shot. Now we need body shot. Probably going to have to go with this one. We, the flash did go off, but man, it sure didn't reach him for some reason or another. Doesn't seem like it did. Here's turn around that one. I don't know. It's, maybe we can make that one work. Let's try it just to see. I know I say that. I don't. I think there's only one we've hit so far that wouldn't work after we tried it. Holy cow! That pulled that up a lot. Very bright. A lot of negative space on the bottom. Not a fan of that. And this one one crop that makes me throw the composition all over the place. Try to order that again, and then we're gonna slide that exposure down a little. Holy cow. 
Bring the shadows up a bit. I want to show the dog off more. That I can work with. So face shot, body shot. Personality wise, I hate to say this, it sounds terrible, but he didn't have much of one. He was pretty just, okay, what are we doing now? Okay, I'm cool. Let's go. He, he didn't really care one way or the other. Uh, which can be a good thing if, if you like those kind of those kind of dogs. Kind of chill out. That again. Too bright and too yellow. Hmm. And that's a tricky one to get where I like it. That's pretty close. I think we're just going to go with that. So we'll read that one as well. And that was the last for Lightroom. So now, back over here and make sure I'm on the right screen. I have a bad habit of that as well. Sorry, I was reading something there. So now we are going to edit these in Photoshop. We're going to get rid of the leashes. Adobe Photoshop. I need a drink. So in here, and you know, I was noticed on the last stream, this microphone is a fantastic microphone. Unfortunately, it makes it really difficult to do things like drink something on stream because then I get to gross you guys out with all the swallowing sounds. Maybe one day I'll get this thing reoriented in a way it doesn't do that. But in my current desk setup, it pretty much is the only place it can be right now. But that might be changing pretty soon. So we're going to use the healing brush and we're going to go through and just kind of kill all this weird stuff that's going on here. I don't mind the colors, like those are colors, but when you get kind of a crazy hair, it just draws too much attention for something that's that doesn't need to. And the fact that he's all matted up doesn't help, but I had a couple dogs like that. That Great Pyrenees is also like that. And I'm just kind of taking a big stroke at these to get them Look, you don't have to recreate the wheel here. Nobody's going to be pixel peeping these pictures. And if they are, I mean, what do you expect out of the. You know, if I was submitting this to National Geographic, sure. I am not. They will definitely do the job. I just wonder if I need to pull his eyes up some. I think it actually looks pretty good. Don't like that freak hair that's poking out there. Draws a little bit too much attention. Save that off. Go back to Lightroom, wherever it went. There it is. I need to move the icon so I can more easily find it. And it brought it to the top as a copy. And we're just going to rate that now as a 2 because we've edited it. And we're going to edit the face shot. Excuse me, edit in Adobe Photoshop CC. And we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to eliminate these eye boogers and kind of these weird hairs. Because it's something that potentially if someone came to adopt a dog, you wouldn't have anyway. Hopefully by then he's had a bath and a good brushing. And I have an old mechanical keyboard as well. That's why I think so is obnoxiously loud. It's on my to get list um, as far as things that I would like to have to make the stream a bit better. A nice mechanical. I think they call it brown key. I don't know. It's been. I haven't bought a keyboard and I've had this one for probably the past eight years. <laughs> so it's been a minute. But apparently they have something called browns and blues and I don't know, something else and something else. 
I think I read that the brown is kind of the best of both worlds. You get kind of that mechanical tactile feel, but they're quieter. I don't know. Turn that flow up a little bit. Just getting rid of some of the funny stuff. And I think we can go with that. I mean, there is a cut or a uh, leash under that, but you can't really tell. So rather than jack all his fur up, I think I'm just going to leave it like that. What does that screen say now? I bet it says like 47 or 48 followers, doesn't it? I don't know what is up with that. It says 48. I set that goal up so a couple weeks ago, and it was right then, and just somehow magically over time it got wrong. I don't, I don't know how that works. Red Eye Shell, how you doing, buddy? Glad to see you. Glad you're stopping by. We're just at the part of the puppy pictures that we're cleaning them up in Photoshop. And glad you're along for the ride. And we might, if we don't get called in, we might do some stream some Elite this afternoon. I really need to find a better way, though, to keep that more engaging for people. And I say that because it seems like... <laughs> it seems like we do a lot of bullshitting, which there's nothing wrong with that. But I would also like to make the stream a little more entertaining for those that are seeking the entertainment value. Hopefully we can do something something about that. I also thought about doing some more exploring, so maybe that'll be a thing. We'll see. Hmm, that didn't do the greatest job, but... But yeah, glad, glad to see you again, Red Eye. Of course, we get a line here. I don't like. Doing well, just got home, but heading out again. Wife's dad's birthday today on Father's Day. There's a double whammy, so he gets everything in one day. Everybody gets to cheat out of mine. To get. My wife gives me crap about that one because her birthday always falls close to Mother's Day. So sometimes I just put them together and get her a bigger gift. Apparently that's a bad thing. Uh, yeah, about Elite, I think I had a stream sniper yesterday, but not sure. Uh, well, I don't, I don't play open generally. Nothing I'm doing requires interaction with people I don't know. Just me. Um, but it's gonna happen if you stream and you stream in open. It's gonna happen. But hey, it adds content. You know, whatever. Um, also made Elite Explorer. Awesome. Congratulations on that. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. Tough one to get. I'm not there yet. I'm going to get rid of these big, nasty balls of fur coming off the tail because, again, that's something that more than likely won't be there very long. Once they get the dog in and go get them cleaned up, make them look presentable. I didn't realize I was in open. Ah, well, yeah. You found out the hard way. <laughs> but, you know, again, I... Whatever. Make content. Rebuys are usually fairly cheap anyway. I'm going to sharpen these eyes up a little because that ended up a little bit softer than I like. That's better. I don't like the tree growing out of her back either. But it's kind of what we got. Best thing we got. It was funny because I came out of frame shift and was nearly insta-killed. I was like, what? No. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they... You know, or maybe somebody was just sitting there to begin with. You know, especially if you, you like, just came into the system. But it's somewhat random, I thought. I don't know. I don't do it, so I don't know a lot about it, other than what Eve taught me, so. So we've got all three of Sam's pictures edited. It was a Sam. I was thinking it was a female a minute ago, but Sam. Sam I am. So we've got those three edited up. Now we're gonna go on to Athena and get hers edit, edit, edited up. Really, I do speak English most of the time. 
pretty much, but it's all good in the end. It's kind of the way I look at it. You know, again, I don't, I don't play open because it's just not, I have, there's nothing in open I want. And I'm, when I'm streaming, I don't care to be harassed either. You know, I like to do, do what, do what we do. There's plenty of great P PVP channels out there if it's something you'd like to engage with or entertain with watching. It's not something we typically do here. We're more chill and some exploration and chatting about whatever and talking about the puppies, all about the puppies. How was your week? I am, my week was a bit nuts. Um, my current employer, which some of you already know, and I think you already know as well, Red Eye, they've been working me to death so many hours. And I do, so I have a nine to five. I call it a nine to five. It's not nine to five. It's anything but nine to five, but you know what I mean. In the rat race thing. I do photography work, both volunteer and professionally. I also do consulting work. Um, mostly tech consulting, web consulting, getting things together like that. So I'm always, I haven't had a day off in I don't know how long. Not that that's a huge deal, but man, I'd like to stop and take a breath. And hopefully next week, that's going to, not next week, the, you know, by the end of this month, that's going to change. And uh, it will all be for the better. I will be able to spend presumably more time with you lovely folks. Sorry about that. Tickling throat. Uh, since I was out in the black, I didn't even think about being an open. I get that completely. Yeah. Um. I used to hit open every time for the sake of board hopping, but... I don't know. I mean, again, you know, it's whatever. Shit happens. It's how we learn, right? And it adds, like I said, it adds content to the streams as well. I have thought about doing open just because I know it would, people would come in just to watch me get the shit blown out of me. I have another account. But it, to me, it's no fun. I'd rather find something that I enjoy doing as well as the stream likes, personally. If I wanted to PvP, I'd go back to WoW or something of that nature. See so if I can get rid of this leak. I knew it was going to do that. So it's not going to let me edit that out that way. And I see your post there, and I'll get you in just a second, Red Eye. Let me see if I can knock this out real quick without it going too nuts. And I'll catch up with you. Um, I just want to make sure I can get these done. In case work calls me and says, come on in. Of course, I have half the notion to tell them what they can do with that request, but... Just not the kind of guy I am. Oh, the monster's up and about. He's wanting something. What time is it? It's only 3.30 here, so it's not food. Disassembling my PS4. That sounds a bit dangerous. Dangerous in the sense that uh, that used to be. I used to dink with stuff like that all the time. If I had to do it these days, I don't know if I can put the damn thing back together because my eyes don't, aren't quite what they used to be. So I imagine I'd miss all kinds of shit. Are you wanting out of here, buddy? Uh, we finished up our our April fi financials. Sorry, I, this light makes that terribly hard to read. That's something else I need to fix. Uh, sent them to the CEO. He can see them. He called my boss up and goes, these are wrong. We had to explain to him that we didn't make up the numbers. Just the, what, the report. Yeah, just report what they are. Yeah, it, it, it... In my experience, it is not uncommon for the CEO to have no damn idea what's going on because they don't ask enough questions to know. And if they do ask enough questions, the people are so damn scared to give them the right answer that they kind of fluff it around a bunch of I don't knows. You want out of here, buddy? I'm going to let him out of here real quick. What time is it? We've been streaming about an hour and a half. I know it's been too long, but he wants to get out of here. And uh, I need to check my drink there because it's running empty. So give me just a few minutes here. We're going to come back. We're going to finish editing these up in Photoshop and continuing with our BS sessions, which I always love with you guys. 
and uh, try to get these knocked out and we'll go from there so on that note hang around i'll be right back And back. I didn't think that would be too terribly long. Another thing I gotta figure out how to do, because it's driving me nuts. I need to move that camera. It bugs me, and, and I know I'm looking at a camera. But it bugs me that I'm not looking at you guys while I'm talking and doing my thing. It almost seems rude <laughs> to me. It's like, you know, I'm over here, not over here. I need to get it moved, but because it's my desk space. This desk was not meant for streaming. You should see all the crap all over my desk. Maybe someday I'll show you. It's a wreck, but I want to get the camera moved to in front of the screen I'm looking at most of the time so that it's just better engagement. I, I don't care for that personally. Anyway, back to what we were doing. Um, we're going to get Mom Shadow out of here on the ground only because it is grabbing my attention. And that is not the tool that I wanted. This is the tool that I wanted. And yeah, it kind of blurred it a little more than I like. Actually, it blurred it a lot more than I like. Maybe we'll do this. Excuse me. Maybe we'll do this another way. But I'm also curious what you guys would like to see in the stream. Um, you know, we, we get here before long but I'm sure we're gonna get affiliate status and I want to you know I'm trying to keep on a track that's entertaining for you guys you know not only what I enjoy doing but you guys gotta enjoy it too apparently you know you're not gonna be here um, but you know kind of what you like if you like the chill atmosphere you like late dangerous you'd like to see some other games you'd like to do something else you know you like you know whatever tell me please Trading in your PS4, not tinkering with it? Why are you disassembling it? Do you have something in it, like a hard drive or something that you want to take out of it? Because I've heard people doing such things. Which I guess they're just a miniature computer inside, is all they are. But, uh, yeah, I, I've never taken mine apart. I've 
I've had an Xbox. Just unplugging everything. Gotcha. Oh, so by disassembling, you mean just like taking it off the shelf and putting it all in a box and blah, 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 blah. Getting all the stuff together for it. I got you. I thought you meant actually like taking the thing apart. And I don't know why I thought that, but that is what I thought. <laughs> so that's different. That explains it. So that one we're giving it two. But yeah, I used to have, I had an Xbox for a while. It's been some time ago now. And I don't know. I, I've always been a more of a PlayStation fan. I'm not a big console or period. I never have been. I say I never have been. Back during like Super NES and Nintendo days, yes, I was definitely a console person. Because you couldn't really get game computers so much, or at least affordable price. So um, so I had, you know, Nintendo and Super NES and all that whenever I was doing more consoling. But then some years later, you know, I got Xbox and whatnot. And I played a few games on it. Halo series. That was my favorite. I'm not a big fan of the game. I was a fan of the story. I always enjoyed the story. So, Impoverish, what's going on? Glad to see you. Thanks for dropping by. I'd rather play on my computer than a console. Yeah, yeah. Not much. We're getting through our puppy pictures here. I started the stream a bit early today. I know. And I apologize for that for those of you that usually hit me up regularly when we start at 3 p.m. Central. But I might get called into work here in the next hour and a half, two hours. And I want to make sure we can get through these before that happens because it's important I get these pictures out to the volunteers and up in the app so they can get adopted ASAP. So again, and I didn't tweet that either. Today's been a little... I had to work late last night. I went to bed. I didn't get up till like 8 o'clock this morning. That's, I know that may sound a little bit early, but I normally get up at like 4 in the morning. Got up about 8 o'clock this morning. Got up, got in here, had some stuff to fix. Fixed that. By that time, it was time to go do pictures. Got pictures, got home. We're like, oh my gosh, I might get called in. I have to get this done. So it's been crazy. It's been kind of crazy. So I want to get these done. And hopefully, if I don't get called in, and I think actually that's a big if I don't. I have a feeling I'm going to. But if I don't, we might play some Elite tonight. We just might. We hit 50 followers. Which was the goal. And, uh, all right, heading to the store to trade this in. Be back later if you're still on. Have a great one. Well, you have a great one as well, Red. I hope they give you a good, uh, I don't know, they got like a default amount they give you for a certain version, or is it like on quality and all that? But anyway, I hope they give you a good trade in for it. But we might, I don't know, we'll see. But I, we hit the, we hit the follower mark. Today, I want to do that during a normal stream time at a normal hour because there's quite a few people that followed that were banking on seeing him squash me Jackson that is so probably I'll probably wait till next Sunday and then that afternoon after we edit actually we may not even edit, maybe that's the first thing we'll do that's the first thing we'll do on Sunday next week is Jackson we, that was our 50 follower goal Jackson gets to sit on my lap I've got to do a little bit of technical setup which might take me about an hour to get everything set up and working properly get a scene that makes sense for it so that we can do that. So I would say next Sunday at 3 o'clock p.m. Central Time, um, we'll do that. But I haven't, I didn't tweet out starting early today because I didn't honestly think about it until it was too late because it's been that, I can't wait. By the end of this month, I shouldn't have these hours issue, hopefully. That's all going to go away. And I'll be, even though I, I, I will probably keep the same stream schedule for a bit, I'll probably do more off-schedule streams. And uh, it'll just give me more flexibility and time to do the things that I want to do to get this stream where I think it should be. But always interested in what you guys think, what you like, what you want to see, what you don't want to see. If you're ever somebody else, somewhere else and they're streaming and you're like, oh wow, that's really cool. I enjoyed that. Whether it's interaction or a game or leaderboards or those boss battles. You know, I don't, I don't generally do a lot of that stuff because it, it doesn't impress me that much. But if it does you, you know, let me know. I'm all ears for what things we might want to do with the channel. Because I definitely want to make a good, strong community around here. And I want to do the things that you guys enjoy doing. And loving these beautiful puppies is a big one. She was she was a Mastiff mix. She was a big girl. I bet you she went 120 pounds. She was a pretty big girl. Super sweet. Really sweet. You can tell from that face. She was all about the attention. She just loved it. 
And from my understanding, most Mastiffs are. I've only ran into a few over uh, over my dog years, I guess you would say. And But everyone I've met was super sweet. And we need that one other one, which was the body shot. We are in tomorrow's stream. If you're into the gaming streams. Tomorrow's stream, we're going to be playing some different music in the background. Something with a little... Well, we probably mix Justin's stuff in as well. Because I still think it's amazing work. Just sometimes a little more chill than I really want. Um, but we're going to mix in some other music as well. That I think would be really cool. And then hopefully next week... If all the stars align... It might take a couple if they don't. I'm also going to be adding some stuff that's really going to increase the overall production quality of the stream. I'm super excited about it. We're going to have to come up with some icons too. I think we make a fillet. We're going to get some icons. So I still haven't done that. That'll be fun. Let me start it on it. What kind of icons would you guys like to have for the stream? Can you think of anything in particular that you'd like to have? I thought about using the, you know, the little skull that I use. Or... I don't know, maybe it's something to do with puppies. I'm not sure. So I'm asking you guys what you think. Something you might like to see. That we can possibly integrate into the channel. And have some fun with. Both, you know, be able to use when we go raid. And... Just not sure what it'll be yet. I hate that that heal tool copies like that. I guess it wouldn't work near as well if it didn't. But it sure makes stuff like this difficult. Clean that up a little. Oh. Goof that up. That looks pretty good. We're going to have to go in and Get rid of the shadow on the wall. Because that looks a bit terrible. And that's from the flash. So, let's do it this way. Did I get the... I did not click the right tool. That helps. So we're using the clone tool. I'm just making this big for the sake of lining it up the way I want. I like that. Bring that back down and we're just gonna more or less paint over it and fix all the shadows and the textures. And I know the gradient's kind of wrong. Wow, that angle right there is kind of goofy as well. Yeah, we definitely don't want to put the dog on it like that. Looks like we might have to do do this in a bit of a different manner for a couple of these. So that's it up. So we need the down. That's off screen a little bit. And this can be tricky when, when you have patterns like this. And especially with colors. These soft gradients. Like I'm not liking anywhere that that's going actually. I'm going to back this back up to here and we're going to be a little more accurate with this. Let's try to reproduce these colors a little better. How can I use a smaller, a bit smaller of an attack here on it? That line is there. This may be too dark. And a little bit. Uh, it's just a line there. And this is, I know this is a bit tedious, and I'm sure it's not overly exciting to watch, but this is part of the process when we get something goofy like this that we don't like. I mean, I could have probably left it. Some might have just thought it was dirt on the wall. I don't know. But to me, it's rather annoying. 
this one goes downwards. That's close. So I'm just trying to touch this up with stuff that's closer to where it needs to get touched up. Because we've got these kind of weird shades that go across the screen. Oh, that's a, a bit dark again. But that's what we have to work with, so... That's what we're using. This whole thing is really dark, but I think that's mostly because of that shadow. Oops, a little bit much on that one. There we go. And that whole thing is super dark. Might have to just make it all super light. I didn't want that in there though. That's all a little off now. from one of my daughters saying happy Father's Day. She must have just gotten off of work. So I have to remember to call her a little later and thank her. I say my daughter. It's my stepdaughter, but she's just like my daughter. She actually asked me to adopt her not long ago. So we're going through that process. I've had her since she was five years old. Treat her like my own, so. And her boyfriend slash fiance also telling me happy Father's Day, which, you know, brings up a good point. If you are any fathers out there, happy Father's Day to you. Um, I hope it's been an amazing one for you. I have such a loving family. I couldn't ask for any more. I don't need big gifts and fancy things. I've got them and we're all healthy and we're being provided for. I'm just thankful I have all that. Just got my Pappy Day call two hours ago. So great. Isn't it though? My my daughter I say my youngest daughter. They're only a few months apart. Again, one's biological, one's my stepdaughter. But she called me from St. Louis St. Louis area, which is where she lives at. It's where I used to live at. She didn't, she ended up moving back there. Long story. Anyway, I also have a grandson um, who is about almost two now. And uh, that's a tough one. I'll tell you. That is a super tough one come the holidays. Not having access to your grandkids. And if you don't have any, you probably don't completely understand what I mean when I say that. If you do, you totally get it. There's nothing better than being able to take one of your young grandchildren out and just totally get them pumped up on sugar and ice cream and wind them up and then go, here mom, you can come back now. <laughs> you get to spoil them rotten and not have to worry about it. It's so, so awesome. But that makes it tough being so far from them. That's my phone telling me I had a message that I already read. I guess if I just open it. It would not do that. Again, I have to unfortunately leave it on because there's a good chance I'm going to get called in, so. Got to make sure I can get that message. So I think we're good here. I mean, it's still a little, I don't like the color there so much, but I'm afraid again, it's almost four o'clock now and I might get that phone call and I'm afraid I'm not going to get through these. Because the shift starts at five and I'll know around five whether or not this other person that hasn't been showing up shows up. Because if they don't show up, I'm going to get the phone call. So we'll see. Speaking of which, I totally forgot. I need to move my work clothes from the washer to the dryer. Oops. That's a thing. I'm going to edit this here in Photoshop. So I'm just going to leave it on this scene 
Laundry room's right around the corner. I'm gonna go move my clothes real quick. I super again. I really apologize. I totally forgot when I was on break a minute ago. I gotta move those over there in case I get called in. So give me one second here. I'll be right back. All right, again, my bad, totally sorry. How unprofessional of you, sir. I just told, I totally flipped, just slipped my mind. I got him in the wash, I was gonna do it earlier today, but my uh, sister-in-law, who's also staying with us right now, had stuff in there, so I didn't get started till later, and if, man, if they call in and I don't have work clothes, that's gonna suck, because then I gotta go ruin good clothes. So anyway, let's get this edited up. And, uh, but yeah, the grandkids, man, I miss the crap out of them. She always FaceTimes me, my, FaceTimes me, my daughter does, so that she can make sure I get to see him, and he gets to see me. And I know at this point I'm kind of the grandpa in the box, but I'll take it. That's all I can get for now. And she's also, she's not really engaged. She's been with the same guy forever. So I don't know why she's not, honestly. Don't tell her I said that. But he, he's a good he's a good kid. He's a good dad. And he provides for the family. Over there, so. Something to be said for that anymore, I'll tell you. But we're going to edit up the puppies. And we got about, I think we've got three more to edit, right? Three more. We had six in total. And, uh. Get these posted so that we can get these lovely fur babies homes love it love it good with that mike seemed a touch loud on my end probably not so much on yours but it definitely was on mine So two, and then we need the, this is the personality shot. Just scheduled my son and I a trip to Universal in October. Awesome. You know, I've never been, <laughs> could I be your son for a bit and take me to Universal? I've never been there myself. That looks kind of cool. I mean, so most of it looks a little cheesy at my age, but it still looked fun nonetheless. Just fun to experience. I've never been. I've told myself I'd go. My wife wants to go to Mexico this year. She has been gunning for that for a while. So that's probably what we are doing this year. When, I'm not sure. She hasn't. At some point, she'll come to me and say, this is when we're going. So when that happens, and I don't like how sharp that is. So we're going we're gonna to blur that out some. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. That's not bad. Eleven. That's nah, still a little sharp, but it'll be all right. Get the leash off the neck. Spot healing. I went to the island of adventure when I was twelve. It was amazing. He's twelve now. So we're getting Universal and Islands Adventure for five days. AKA I'm broke now. <laughs> yeah, that stuff is not cheap. You know, and I told, that's what I was telling my wife, but she's, she's been, she hasn't been complaining, so to speak, but she's been talking a lot about as we, you know, as we start to get a little older, she wants to do more things. She wants to explore more and travel more. Not that I'm completely against it, but we do have three wonderful rescue dogs at home 
So that makes that kind of difficult as far as, you know, overnight travel and things. Um, but she's been all about it and she's earned it. She busts her ass. She has earned every bit of it. And I told her, I said, you know, I'm not a big fan of leaving the country. I like it where I'm at. Um, call it being comfortable or whatever. Not that I'm not infatuated with some other cultures, um, but I just, I don't have a big desire to go anywhere else. She totally disagrees, and I'm having to remove these whiskers just because they were screwy looking when I fixed the other one. Um, but she just really wants to do that traveling, so we're going to end up doing it at least a bit. Yeah, if where I'm going requires a passport, I'd just rather not. Not her, man. She wants to do it, so. So uh, that's going to be a thing. Happy wife, happy life. If you're married, you know exactly what I'm saying. God's to keep the ladies happy, or vice versa. You know, some guys can be heavy complainers too. Am I right? Am I right? I don't complain too much. My wife doesn't complain too much. She's super supportive of all the crazy crap I pull and do. And I try to be that to her as well. She just generally not as quite as crazy as I am. Is that surely that's not that big? One of these days, I am going to get that other keyboard, and I don't like that line again, so we're just going to blur that out. You know, again, we're not trying to recreate reality here, in most cases, we're just editing out stuff that looks tacky in a way that doesn't draw attention. That's all. They're all low res stuff anyway. Looks like we got a bit of a leash showing down here. And I prefer no leash. I just think it makes I think it makes the dog look more approachable. He's dirty. It's actually quite dirty. Still works, still cute. You know, when people see these online. That's about the equivalent of what they're going to see size-wise. So most of that stuff, you'll never even notice. Most of it, I only notice because we're viewing it so large. So there. Yeah, we have three more dogs to do. And it is almost four o'clock. The Great Pyrenees. You know, I have never owned a Great Pyrenees. Which is kind of sad because there's been a few at the shelter... I don't have a lot of experience with the breed, but every one that I have met, every Pyrenees I have met are super gentle giants, super calm, sit there and you know, what do you want? You, you want to pet me? Cool. You want to walk? Cool. You want to lay here? Cool. Super chill dogs. Other than their size being a bit intimidating for some people, which I get, I don't know why I don't see more of them. They're such good dogs. And maybe it's just been my experience as well with the ones that I've interacted with. Maybe I just got lucky. And, you know, kind of the same way I'm a bit tainted on huskies. Not that they're not beautiful. They're just insane. At least the ones I've interacted with. But, again, I'm sure that doesn't represent the population. You really have me wanting to go capture images for dogs like you're doing. Do it, man. I mean, even just try it. You know, go in, just go to a shelter. Don't ask them for volunteer or anything. Just go into a shelter. Say you'd like to take a look at the dogs. Ask if they mind if you take a few pictures while you're there. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. I won't think they will. And just try it. And yeah, it might be through a kennel or a cage or whatever, but it might be something to try. Or ask them, tell them you'd like to take some pictures for them so they can have the pictures to edit. I'm telling you, man, most of these shelters and, and things are so underfunded. They take all the help they can get. And every person... You know, it you don't it doesn't matter if you don't think you're very good at it. Baloney. Getting their picture out there in any kind of fashion. Even if you were to take a picture that is on par or worse than the one they take and you put it on your social media, that in itself is worth it. Because it helps advocate for those dogs. It gets them in front of more eyes, gets them home, gets them helped. So I I can't 
you know, suggest enough to get involved. Pictures, just walking them, talking to them, anything. My retouching and photo editing is pretty solid. It, it's a craft and it's always improving. Again, yeah, and you only have to do what you're comfortable with. Um, I have a pretty cut and dried process, which you've probably seen several times. I know you've been here for a few of my streams. It's pretty straightforward what I do. It takes me a little longer on stream because we'll sit and we'll talk a bit, but I don't mind that. I enjoy it and it helps. You know, this is my way. I don't just take pictures of dogs, of shelter animals, and I don't just edit those and I don't just send them back to the shelter or, or upload them. I advocate for the animals as well. And one of the big ways I advocate for them is right here. It's by getting people like you that have an interest in something like this, see kind of what I do, talk to somebody else that has common interest about it, and get out there and do it. So it's not just about dogs that are close to me or in my county or whatever. Anywhere in the world, if you have a place you can go help for the animals, it doesn't matter if it's dogs, cats, horses, whatever it is, there's rescues for it. Some of them are a little further away though. But in whatever rescue that is, help in any way you can. If you've just got extra money laying around in no time, throw a little extra money at them. If you don't, and you can advocate, you know, go to their website, their social sites, help them share pictures, post stuff for them, help share them that way. Even doing that, it doesn't cost you anything but a little bit of time going to their social media site and sharing out some of those pictures. Give them a like, give them a thumbs up. Next time you're at the store, pick up an extra, dag an extra bag of dog food drop it off there or cat food or, or whatever it is or cat toys or you have to be careful with the toys sometimes because some shelters won't let them play with them because they can contaminate other animals but you can also ask call them up and ask them you know hey i want to i want to help how can i do that other than maybe monetarily if you're not you know well off or well to do or have some extra cash laying around they'll definitely tell you beyond a doubt and a lot of the places, the larger rescues or county rescues, they get funding through grants. And to my understanding, no county shelter um, can be classified as a 501c3 or non-for-profit organization. So the only way they get donations and whatnot is just through word of mouth and some, you know, promotions here and there. So, you know, we work, I say we work, we volunteer at a county shelter. I also do work for other small rescues here around me. And it's not just for dogs either. I also photograph cats. I've also photographed horses. I haven't done much in the way of livestock, but I don't know of many rescues around here for that. But definitely for the horses, which is a very cool experience if you have access to do that. That's a lot of fun. Um, but whatever, you know, however you can help. However you can help them out. What, however little you may think it is, if you like animals and you do one thing, you go to their, their social site and you share a picture of a cat or dog or whatever, and that cat or dog or whatever gets adopted, you potentially just saved an animal's life. It was all just worth it. We get to see that happen all the time. It makes you feel so good. Uh, but I figured it gives me a chance to edit more. But work on the work on the photography skills absolutely and there's lots of great books and youtube videos and there's so much stuff online anymore um i guess you were doing all natural light no flash actually i use it on camera flash for this it doesn't always fire because it doesn't have the greatest recycle time and sometimes because dogs are dogs and you you've just got to snap a few in a row you don't always get it um but no this is uh i you do use an on-camera flash for this work the sun was playing tricks with us today in and out and in and out and if you spend time chimping at every picture you'll never get done so you kind of go and just look at your light meter and camera and say is it crazy no okay shoot it we're shooting raw anyway we can always plug away at it here um but no i use on camera flash i don't know if you can i don't know it might, it might not even a cycle fire on this you can see it here you see it's really small i'm using a small diffuser on an on-camera flash and i'm using a 70 to 200 and because these got to get cropped to one by one, and I never know how the picture is going to work out in the end, um, I'm usually a pretty good shot away, you know, a good 20 feet away from the dog or so. And I run about a 5.6 aperture. And so you just got to kind of balance it. And if you're not familiar with some of the stuff that I just said, don't sweat it. It's not nearly as hard as you think it is. It's just a matter of getting there and dinking with it a little bit. And uh, you'll figure it out. Don't be scared of flashes. Natural light is absolutely beautiful, don't get me wrong. And understanding it, which I still sometimes completely get it wrong, 
the better you understand natural light, the better you can understand flash photography. They're not dramatically different. The only difference is that you can't control the sun, you can control the flash. You can only control the sun through your camera. So it can make, you know, it, it can make for a great learning. And you can also do some super creative stuff outdoors. I mean, I've seen, we've all seen killer outdoor photography. I am not what I would consider an outdoor photographer. So use diffusers. Um, I do, I use a small, the one I use for this, I have an on-camera flash and it's about, I want to say it's a four by five. It's not very big that it goes over the end of the flash to help disperse it a little bit. Um, and it also helps prevent a little bit of that red eye look and from the pets you can get sometimes if you're not careful, but you don't necessarily have to. I mean, if I, if the lighting in this facility I was at was set up differently, this wall back, I would do a lot of bounce flashing off this wall because this makes, you basically take a small flash. I would shoot like from sitting over here in front shooting out away from the building and I would turn my flash at that building take you know take that diffuser off and hit it and it would be like a huge softbox and I no doubt it'd be beautiful but the problem is right there with the side of the building it's like a huge ugly parking lot and nasty background yucky kind of stuff so use a speed light then yes I do yeah, the white wall is nice. I noticed the shadows from the flash. Yeah, and that happens sometimes too. It just, it totally depends on where the dog lands, where we land, and what room we have to work with because at the shelter we're at, it's not a very big place. It's really hard to remove distractions. It's really hard not to get a background. And I think we've seen that a minute ago. Was it on Kathy? Um, where we had that great shot, but the tree is growing out of her back? Or was it? Um, I thought it was Kathy. I'm just trying to see if I can find it. Now I talked about it. Everybody wants to see it. Was it Athena? No, it was not Athena. Surely it wasn't. Then a small attachable foldable mini softbox. Uh, that's what I use. And I use that for convenience. Um, a little bit also being sanitary. If you, if you want to pull things around like stands, they'll constantly be on the ground and you'll be moving them around. And again, this totally depends on the shelter rescue you're working at. If you get, if you go to pick one and you go talk to them about it and they said, yes, please do this. They will typically have you come in and do a training session first. And that training session is going to let you know how they handle their animals, best practices to make sure you stay safe and the animals stay safe and any patrons stay safe. I highly recommend that. And if they don't do that, be a little bit concerned, but at least be safe, you know, be safe about it. Know that animals can carry diseases from one to the other, depending on how they evaluate their, their animals. We have unrestricted access to all the animals. I do not mess with animals, however, in isolation. Um, I don't mess with animals that have been quarantined. I don't feel I'm qualified to do so, even though I probably could. I could go into their kennels with them and try to get shots that way. I, I personally would not do that. But it's what you're comfortable with. Don't, you know, don't overdo it. Just step into it, start messing with it. Um, you'll find that if you get good at taking pictures of dogs, you can probably take good pictures of toddlers as well because they're not that much different. They're almost impossible to get the right attention of and get the right shot. You just got to get to a spot that's not super distractful and try to get the right one of them. Um, it's like a lunch bag. Not mine. Mine's super small. I'll be happy to show you. Here, I can grab it here quick. Just a So I, and my gear is down below as well because the same picture, the same picture, the same camera I take pictures with is also doing this video. Um, it's just kind of a pain in the butt actually. I need to buy another camera. And it's a Nikon D810. So I'm using Go, uh, the Godox V862 in. It's a high speed sync. Actually, let me switch scenes here. And I still don't know if you'll be able to see it because Nikon, if you're familiar with Nikon, um, they're... Their autofocus in video mode is anything but fantastic. <laughs> so this is the flash I use. 
this is the one that I use for my puppy pictures. I have a couple of them. I always, you always keep a backup and spare, battery operated. And on that, I put this little thing. They're cheap. They're super cheap. I think I got it from Amazon. It's a Pixco, P-I-X-C-O. At least that's what it says on the front there. And it's just a little nylon cheap, and it's just a diffuser. It's just to turn the little one into the big one. And you can also, if you really want to do the most you can do with it, you can pull out the diffuser plate on the front to give you a wider shot pattern and put that in there as well. Now you will lose a little bit of power behind that when you do that. Um, but get if you don't have one of these, you can get them really cheap. You don't, you know, this one actually wasn't even that expensive, I don't think, or the Godox line. Um, just get one. If, you're, if your camera will let one of these things fit on there, man, get it. Even if you hate flash or can't stand flash or whatever, get one. Get one. $180 new. Yeah. They're, they're not that, I mean, don't get me wrong, that's not super cheap. But if it's a hobby you enjoy, why not, you know, or save up a little bit here and there. Put it on your wish list and whatnot. Throw it out there for your birthday or Christmas or Father's Day or whatever the case might be. But it's it's been a great light. The recycle time on them, I don't know what it is in exact milliseconds. It's not super, super great. But uh, but the flash has worked amazing. I use it in TTL. High-speed sync works amazing. I use it on auto, works amazing. I use it with the radio remotes. I use them inside of soft boxes, off camera. Works great. I've, I've not had any problem with them. The battery life is pretty good. I have done, I did a commercial shoot earlier this year a headshot session it was an all-day session where I did like 40 different people and I had two I have two of these and I had both in soft boxes and I didn't know I wasn't going to get a mid a mid break because I only have the two batteries yeah I know I'm bad but I never really plan on using both at once um they lasted me all day without the battery going dead so I was impressed I was impressed I'm getting the C10 Cheetah stand with a soft box with Bowen's mount. Yeah, and you know, I'm not a huge photography geek. Don't get me wrong. I love the stuff. I love to talk about it. I don't always know what the hell I'm talking about. I know what I have experience with and what I've researched. So my only suggestion to someone that may not have a bunch of studio equipment or maybe even not have a camera yet, everyone will tell you everything they have does everything you need every time. It's marketing. Don't buy into that. Research what you want. If it, especially if it costs a pretty penny and it's getting an investment. And even more so if it's an ecosystem. Nikon, Canon, Sony, Pentax, uh, Bowens mounts. Regu you know, there are so many different types of ecosystems out there. And it's all about they want to capture you in their market and then keep you in it by being in their ecosystem. So make sure you research that stuff and that you're comfortable with what you're buying into because unless you like trading out all of your stuff frequently, you're going to be kind of stuck in it. I don't have a single stand at all. Those those are pretty cheap and very handy. Uh, I went with Bones Mount so I can use a bigger flash than a speed light. Yeah, I mean, well, the, you can... There are lots of different mounts. It depends on the manufacturer, and I couldn't even ramble them off right now, but there are several different mounting systems. Bowens is one of the most popular, to my understanding. It's one of the most common, and almost every manufacturer out there, in some way, shape, or form, makes a version of the Flash with Bowens mounts. So I don't think my, all my stuff's Bowens mounts as well. So you know, it really depends on the person and what they really want to buy into. So it has a bigger base, can carry more weight. Yeah, yeah, and it's something you have to consider if you do have some kind of monster flash and, you know, you want to put it on a stand. You don't want, you know, some cheap little $5 stand and have a $1,000 light on it. I mean, <laughs> it only takes one bump. And another tip, if you're getting stands and you ever plan on doing, actually, even if you don't plan on shooting anybody else in the, in the photo shoot, you want to, maybe it's just product photography, get sandbags for photography equipment super cheap you have to provide your own sand but you get their, their little bags with carry handles and use those to weight your stands because it'll keep wind from knocking them over it'll keep dogs just knocking them over it'll keep pe people from knocking them over in most cases but i would also highly suggest that as well three bags that you can put water bottles you can do that too yeah they, they're just got zippers on the side i put i got big ziploc bags filled them with sand ziploc the ziploc and put them in there and then zip those so that's how I did it. But yeah, you can use water bottles, whatever, whatever works for you. 
whatever works for you. But, you know, when I was researching getting into all this stuff as well, you know, same deal. It's There's so many options out there. It's like, what the hell am I supposed to buy? What am I supposed to get? Why am I supposed to get it? It depends so much on what you want to do, what you want to accomplish. Before you buy, if you don't have a bunch of studio equipment and you're not comfortable with flash, before you go out and spend a ton, a ton of money on flashes, get you one of these on-camera flashes that also works with remote flash. Whether that's even infrared, it depends on what your camera supports. Infrared, it, it your camera shoots out an infrared light at it. Get the ones that have slave mode on them so it can see the other one flashed, it flashes. Get some way to get it off camera. And to start playing with it, you'd be surprised. It's not quite as difficult as you might think. And once you get, you know, a lot of, I say a lot of experience with it, some experience with it, you'll start doing some really, really cool stuff that'll define your style of work. And, you know, if we get enough people around when we wrap this up and I don't get a phone call in the next 50 minutes, I'm happy to show you guys some more of my studio work. Some of you guys might not have been here last time we showed some of that off. It just shows you a little bit of my style i'm a studio photographer first and foremost that's what i do and i also do that of animals shelter animals um and i'm happy to show you these i do these because obviously there's so many dogs they're not going to drag them all the way down to a studio and get them little pictures so we do it here i don't consider myself to be the greatest outdoor photographer by really any stretch of the imagination I've done a few i enjoy it but it's just not my thing not my thing um that being said, I really need to get back and finish these puppies up in case they give me that phone call. And I don't even know where we are now. I know we got Sammy. I know we got Athena. We can collapse that down. Did we get, we, did we get all, yeah, we got all the bobbies. Did we finish with Indies? I only see one. We only did one of Indies. So we still got this one and we got two more dogs. And I've got about uh, 50 minutes potentially before I get that phone call. I don't know. I hope it doesn't happen and we're able to go do something else afterwards. But I'm more, you know, again, I'm more than happy to talk that tech stuff with you guys. And I apologize that it's a little bit rushed today. I've already explained a few times why, because I might get called into work. You know, if we get, if I can get through these next couple of dogs here, and you guys are welcome to ask questions along the way. I'm happy to sit and talk some tech if you'd like. Again, I don't know a ton about it. I know enough to be dangerous. I can direct you maybe to some resources or help guide you in a way to think about it. But I am not an end all, you know, definitely not. But happy to do what I can and help what I can. And especially if it gets you involved with animals, absolutely. Hands down, do it, just do it. Even if it's just natural light, even, even if it's with your phone. These phones these days are crazy good. Nothing wrong with doing it that way as well. Everybody has one. I say everybody, almost everybody. Use it to get started. And if you're really super hyped about it and you have a phone, you can get photo or uh, Lightroom on your phone along with a few other apps to you know make your adjustments in if, if you'd like to do that. So that's definitely a viable option these days. You don't need to go out and spend several grand on a DSLR or, or whatever. So send another, another way you can do it. Uh, but don't be scared of the flash thing if you've not played with it before. It can be very intimidating, but it's not nearly as hard as you think. Um, once you get, you know, kind of used to the flash, kind of understand how it works, bounce lighting, different power levels, you know, using aperture and, and shutter speed to adjust your flash and your ambient and getting them mixed right. Um, then you can move on to modifiers, soft boxes, grids, reflectors, gold reflectors, white reflectors, diffusers, all that stuff. And you'll just kind of develop the skill set as you go. Don't be scared of it, um, which I'm not necessarily suggesting you are, but it can be intimidating. I know I was for a long time. I did natural light stuff. Most of my photography hobby career, I did natural light. Um, I knew nothing about flash, and most a lot of the stuff I do didn't didn't I say didn't require it. Honestly, nothing requires it unless you're like in a very dark place. But even then, a good enough camera can do it. Um, but just do it. Just I mean. <laughs> I hate to sound like a silly commercial, but, but you just do it. It's not, don't, don't sweat the small stuff. It's not as bad as you think. Man, I hate that her fur is such a wreck. But unfortunately, it just kind of is what it is right now. To edit that would take a crazy while to make it look like something that wasn't distracting. So for now, unfortunately, we're just going to leave it that way. And this 
not the greatest personality thing, but it's still kind of cute. I really should have straightened that up. Why didn't I straighten that up? When you guys say, straighten that crap up, get back out of here. No, I don't want to save it. I need to straighten that thing up. There's another thing. It, you'll find, if you don't already do something like this, you'll, you'll develop little pet peeves. And there'll be silly things that would make squat of a difference to anybody else. Um, and it might be, it might be color, it might be composition, it might be placement, how level it is, uh, lens correct, whatever that is. You'll develop your own style and you'll develop little things that can become pet peeves. So a lot of the stuff that I pick on, nobody'd ever notice or much less care about. They just want to see the puppies and it looks better than that ugly mug shot they get. And that's what it's about. Oh, uh, yeah, it would help if I got the right tool out here. And I do, I do as well have a subscription to the Adobe Suite. Um, it's expensive. <laughs> when I used to get the Creative Suite, it, it was a one-time purchase thing, and you kept it for as long as you needed until you felt you needed an upgrade, and then you bought another one. And then they switched to that subscription platform, which is probably one of the smartest things they ever did, but one of the things that irritated me the most. So now we spend an ungodly amount of money every year. But even even griping about that, it is so worth the money. I think I pay 60 bucks a month or something, the equivalent of paying it yearly, but it's somewhere around there. And you get every Adobe product you can think of just about. Definitely worth it if you're a creative person or you do a lot of creative work. But I think you can get Photoshop and Lightroom, a photography package for is it nineteen dollars a month or nine dollars a month? It's not bad. If it's uh if it's something you plan on doing in any capacity, you're gonna need a good editor. And while I'm not saying there aren't other great editors out there, I think I can probably fairly confidently say there is far more training in the Adobe products just because it has been around for so long and it's used by a lot of professionals in the field. Um, so it's very handy. Wow, look at all that hair laying on the ground. That looks awful. Let's see if we can kill that without it looking too bad. Oh, that's all right. And we're going to pop our eyes a little bit. Get some of that color, maybe. Where am I at? 24% mid-tone. I might have to go with shadows here. That's so dark. You gotta be careful when you're using that dodge tool as well, because it can it can really do weird stuff with the, the saturation and the contrast while you're in there. And you can see how much that sharpened that up. Because I'm I mean how I'm way I mean right here you can see pixels. So I'm not I'm not very far out right there. And it looks pretty crisp overall. So I just want those those colors to pop as much as I can. And like, you know, when they see the picture, they're gonna see that. They're never gonna notice that. They say they being people that view the pictures. I guess there's a zoom in function where you might, but that's just the kind of stuff that I do. Again, you'll develop your own methods for doing such things. So there's one of them, two of them now. Three of them. Okay, so we got all three. We got face shot. We got the body shot, which I'm not a huge freak on, but unfortunately, that's kind of all we got. She was extremely hard to get a picture of. I mean, honestly, I'm not exaggerating. Of all, and I've taken some pictures of some very difficult dogs. This, she was one of the most difficult. I bet it took us almost 15 or 20 minutes to get these. I think there were 13 photos. I think we deleted a couple that I got of her. Really tough. Um, again, here's an example. Um, this is the kind of shots that most shelters get when they come in. They point their phone at them and click, so they have a visual record of the animal, what they look like in case they would get mixed, mixed up or moved or whatever. So if if you're afraid you cannot take pictures of at least of this, at least of this quality, you are mistaken. I don't care what skill level you are at. Not that I'm harping on the shelter here. They do what they can on the budget they can with the time and limitations that they have. But it's up to people like us that have a, at least some inkling and creative talent to go in and get a marginally better picture and uh, and get it out there so that you know people can see a much better representation of the animal. I'm going to get rid of this big white thing when we go over to edit that. Um, but that's what you can offer. Again, and it's great to be involved. 
And if you can do it in the shelter or rescue that you're getting involved with is a 501c3, you can also talk to your accountant. There are some write-offs you might be able to do with that as well. So something to think about. All right, let's see. We clap those. We got her and one more puppy. It's 420. Open that up in Photoshop. It just sounds French to me. Like I can't speak French, but that that's every time I say it, that's what I think about. And wrong tool. All right. And there's shortcuts for all these too. I've just used this stuff for so many years that I don't I've never really done too many shortcuts. And I just don't I don't need to. I don't work in a mass production environment. If you do or you want to, I would highly suggest it. But that's not the kind of work I do. So I'm content with the slow slow clicking. I don't like what that did there. I don't like that either. So I guess we're going to use a clone tool for this. And I'll often do this whenever the healing brush just doesn't behave properly or it wants to pull something from a weird place. Um, and it's not that hard to do. The only thing you have to watch for really with the clone tool is watch your edges. You know, it, the idea is not to recreate reality. And, and believe me, I've tried many times because that's just what, how it was in my head don't do that you're not trying to recreate reality you're just trying to make an edit of something you don't like or don't want and it not make not take attention to it people look at it they don't go oh what's that or oh my gosh they edited that that's what you don't want but other than that it doesn't have to be super impressive it's nothing super i say nothing really impressive what photoshop can do in general or most of the editing software is very impressive but you get the idea not looking to recreate the wheel are not looking to be uh, another Van Gogh or anyone else for that matter. You just do what the kind of artwork that you enjoy. And someone told me the other day that I was like, and they thought I sounded somewhat like Bob Ross, which I don't believe I do. I was very flattered by the comment, but I do like the happy little mistakes. But that's how you refine your art style. Because you know, don't don't try to be like someone else. Don't go find some gray animal photographer if that's your thing. Say, oh my gosh, I want to be just like them. That does not mean, however, you should not find a mentor or someone to follow, um, you know, on Twitter or Instagram or whatever that does get that you like their work and get inspiration from that work. Nothing at all wrong with that. Our knowledge in general is built on the back of giants, and I don't care who tells you any different. Nobody, everybody's thought of something. It's just putting all those things together that make it what it is. So you make your art your art. Here's part of that parking lot problem I was telling you about from earlier. Um, this is actually on a totally different location, but that's the same parking lot. And unfortunately, there is no good direction in this location. And the reason we have to change locations is because the, it's by run. There's three runs there, A, B, and C. A is the new intakes. B um, is for uh, those that are that recently had operations or things like that and C is for the quieter sort of experience and we can't mix the dogs so they're kind of self quarantined so we have to take them to different spots so we get kind of just stuck with this spot for these so if you see a parking lot in the background like that odds are they are from kennel A which means they are new newer to the shelter and he's got really, really dark brown eyes. Not a lot I'm going to be able to do with that. That looks pretty good. It's a good body shot. No tail shot. People are going to want to know if he's got a tail. But we'll just answer them by saying no. He doesn't. Then when they get there, and surprise, he's got a tail. Face shot. Itchy leg. And I am running out of my drink again. And it's just lemonade. No, it's not an adult beverage. Unfortunately, it might be here a little bit though if they don't call me. But I don't want to go into work a little bit tipsy. I 
may not enjoy that too much. Not as much as I would. Not nearly as much. Yeah, I, I'm, just, I'm still a bit baffled by that. I work day shifts, and when I say day shifts, it's 12 to 14 hour shifts. They start at 5 a.m. in the morning. That's when I gotta be there. And this randomly, hey, we're running behind on production. We need you to work at midnight. I work days. If you work shift work, you're probably used to that by now, that kind of switch. I've never worked shift work. So it's not something that I do very often. So I, you know, and I also work around a lot of heavy equipment, so a bit dangerous, I think. But who am I? You know, pull those. And you notice before that was just black, and as I did some dodging on it, I, I at least got some shape out of it. Um, not so much out of that one, but we did get to pull a little bit of color. So you can see a little bit of a brown, hint of brown in the eye. My next door neighbor actually does paint paintings and drawings of dogs. I didn't even know it for the longest time. She's amazing at it too. Maybe someday I'll get some permission to show off some of her work. It's very pretty, very beautiful stuff. All right, head shot, body shot per, that's the different dog. We need his personality shot. His, hers, this is Kathy, right? Yeah, hers. Look at you being Mr. Community Guy. Well, it's not really a community thing. It's it's fellow artist, and she has actually my next door neighbor, literally. And uh, she does beautiful work. I, I've always been jealous of it. Mr. Good Neighbor, the neighborhood grandpa. Actually, we have well, we have quite a range of ages on my street. My next door neighbors on the other side are a young couple. They do a lot of, I say, partying. It's not partying. They have a lot of gatherings, and sometimes we go over there, and the wife drinks a little bit too much wine. But they're good people. And on the other side, it's the polar opposite. They're older, a lot more chill. I don't think I've heard them. Matter of fact, to that point, I haven't heard it lately. Maybe they finally got it fixed. But it used to be they didn't. I guess they didn't know enough about their home alarm. Every time they would come home from work, their old house alarm would go off until they got in and turned it off. I don't know what the hang up there was, but you always knew when they came home because their house alarm went off. Kind of funny. Okay, which other one did we have? This one. Um, but no, it, it's... I live in a somewhat small town outside of Austin, Texas. And it's definitely a small town vibe. The dogs are going out. That's why you're hearing them all wound up. It's a small town vibe with big town amenities. And I really love it here, but it's quickly becoming a miniature Austin. It's all moving out this way. Living in Austin is becoming ridiculous, uh, ridiculously expensive, for one. It's a good and a bad thing. The home that I'm in now, we bought as an investment home. Um, to sit in for about five years or so. So hopefully, that'll pay off. Then we plan to go get a bunch of property, and I'll have like 20 rescue animals. Cats, dogs, horses, whatever. That's kind of the long term. The next house we buy, hopefully, if everything goes well, will be the house we, the last house we own. This is our second since we've been married. Actually, I take that back. This is our third. First one was in outside of Kansas City, Missouri, and the second was outside of St. Louis, Missouri, and this is the third one, and we're down here in Texas now. Loving it. So again, we removed the, the leashes. If you haven't caught me mentioning it before, I take the leashes off because I feel the dog is more approachable that way. And it's not mis misrepresenting the dog. Most of these dogs would happily stay close to you, but they still have a tendency to get into bad places for pictures. Um, not that this is a great one, as you can see from the massive amount of pavement behind their head, but there are much worse places to be in that location, believe me. That and it can be a bit unsafe. Excuse me. Goodness, I don't know why that's messing with me, but it sure is. Okay, there are the three of Kathy. One more to go, and it is 429. It's 
three shots. This must have been the body shot. No, that uh, personality shot. That's what that was. Very unique dog. Like I said, from the from the neck up, totally pit bull sizing and everything. But they have short legs. <laughs> I don't know what they're uh, what they were mixed with. The, the, their kennel car doesn't say either. But you know, pretty good dog. A little bit leery at first of people but you know let me throw you in a jail somewhere where you don't know anybody and everybody's always screaming and see how crazy you get I know I would insecure and maybe even a bit scared intimidated to say the least the same thing happens to them You know, you never know where these dogs come from either. They may have been out running the streets forever. Maybe an owner surrender. Somebody just got out into somebody's fence. I say got out of somebody's fence. The only way we would end up with pictures of them if they got out of someone's fence is if the people who lost them out of the fence never went looking for them because we won't take a picture of a dog until after it's been at the shelter for 10 days um, because 10 days is the hold limit. Once an animal's been there for 10 days, then now the shelter officially owns the animal and will put them up for adoption. Some really well cared for. Like this dog looked really clean and nice and this is also from uh, the A run, which is all the new intakes. But it's a very curious dog for sure. Very interesting breed. Get a lot of purebreds too um, that can come through the shelters. The thing is that, that typically a rescue will pull them before you ever even know they're there. Like a, a, a purebred rescue will. Like they get a lot of Pyrenees at this shelter because we're down south in Texas and for some reason there's just a lot of Pyrenees in general. Um, we get quite a few in, not as many as I would think, but quite a few. And most of them go to the Pyrenees rescue, Great Pyrenees rescue, before they even go up for adoption on the site. So if, if you are interested in a dog, but you're like, well, I don't really want a mixed breed, which you're silly. They, they, they make some of the greatest dogs. But if you don't, you can always mention to your shelter what you're looking for, your shelter rescue, and they'll put it down for you. And if they, something comes in that fits what you're looking for and fits your lifestyle or your family's needs, you bet they'll call you. Because I like to think at least that most, if not all of them, want these dogs in good homes. Sharpen his face up a little bit because that was a little bit soft and dodge those eyes a bit. Not too crazy. We're still on shadows and we're back to mid tones. We're 25%. I like doing 25% because I can always go over it and over it, but if you kind of do it too much at once, it gets a bit nuts. And that's not bad. I'm going to run without. Two, right, yep, one, two. So a personality shot, body shot. We still got a head shot, and there it is, and I didn't flag it before. That's why it didn't show up. And in Photoshop. I don't know why I always want to say that like that. I do. It's fun. It's just fun to do. Wow, that's terrible. Don't like that. Let's try it one more, the one other way. Better. Still not what I was wanting out of it. Let's just grab. That here. And we're just going to reshape the ear a little bit. Again, it doesn't, for, for this kind of work, it doesn't have to be award-winning. I mean, very, nobody... If anybody pixel peeps your work like this, just don't even pay any more attention to them. Because it's not about... In this particular line of work, it's not about the photograph as much as it is helping the animals. But don't don't sweat it so much. I get crazy sometimes. 
by the time it gets out the door low res most of that stuff you're not going to see like if you didn't know i just edited that you would have no idea there's actually a fold in her in her ear right there her ear his ear i don't remember at this point nobody didn't even know it unless you point it out are they going with a fine tooth comb and trying to inspect it so don't worry about that stuff again you're not trying to recreate reality you're just making edits that are not that don't grab attention that's the key This eye bit, clean some of that out. I think I'm okay with the rest of that. Bring those eyes up a bit. It's already pretty sharp. And that's pretty good. Close that. Back here. Bam. That's all of them. And hey, it's when it's 4.35. So I made my goal anyway. My goal was to get these edited before 5 o'clock. Just in case I get that phone call. Um, but that is it. So in review, we got Sammy. Uh, this, is, this is that picture I was mentioning earlier with the tree growing out of their back. Again... It's just not the greatest background. Actually, I probably should have done stuff like take that. Looks like a sewer clean out or something out. But it depends on what you have time for, you know, and what you want to do. If you want to go down and get pictures of animals and you want to go crazy on the editing, which I can almost assure you you're going to at first. Um, but after you do it for a while, it just it becomes un unreasonable to do so because it takes so much time. Uh, you know, it takes us about two hours with travel time about two and a half hours to go take these pictures and then we come back and I spend you know quite a bit of time with you guys editing these pictures and I still have to package them up I have to export them all I have to make a title image for all of them that has their name on it and it's the one that's that they use I use for my videos particularly but they also use the market the animal by name so I send and do that I send them all out to the volunteers um, get them all I already said get them all packaged up by that time I've got damn near eight hours in the pictures which I'm happy to donate that's what I do I donate that time to the animals and also the shelter like I was saying earlier a lot of these shelters go by grants and some of the grants are by total volunteer hours for the year or quarter or however the grant is ran so you volunteering there can also generate money for that shelter or rescue through grants and it's something you can ask them about I'm sure they'd share but yeah, so that was Sam. I really like that shot. But see that, again, here's the picture they have currently. This is the picture you would see. Uh, you can't even tell he's a dog. I mean, well, you can tell he's a dog, but it looks like it's at the mange or something. Which his hair is kind of stuck together, but beautiful shot there. But you know, if you were going to adopt a dog and, and this is the kind of dog you wanted, um, this pointer mix and you've seen this picture or you've seen this picture you know which one would you be more likely to adopt the dog thus there's why you do it you do it to give all those dogs that kind of opportunity and it makes a difference this was Athena this was a uh, a Mastiff mix she was a big gal I bet she went 120 pounds super sweet um, I've been around a couple different Mastiffs and they were both that way. Very timid, a little bit reserved, a little bit laid back, very wants to please the, the owner or the people around him. Super sweet gal, big gal though. She was a big gal. And then we had Bobby. Bobby was a, what was he? He was a pointer mix as well cattle dog mix hey messiah great to see you thanks for dropping by you're just catching the later end of our photography stuff for the for the puppies um i know you weren't here earlier to catch this but i end up starting today early because i'm, I'm afraid i don't know for sure yet but i'm afraid in the next 20 ish 20 to 20 to 40 minutes i'm gonna get a phone call from work and get called into work midnight so i want to make sure i can log in and get the stuff edited 
before that happened and if it doesn't happen we'll probably shut this this stream down for a bit and I'll go eat and then we'll come back maybe do something to eat tonight possibly thinking about it if it's something you guys might want to come and hang out for um, this is Bobby and he was the uh, cattle dog mix breed pretty good I mean uh, nothing really I don't remember anything specific about this particular dog so it's probably just pretty laid back and glad to be outside a lot of them are when you take them out kind of wind down for a minute I like the there's actually flowers up on top of those but we can't get far enough away from them to shoot and we can't get so we can't get the top of those flowers salty heart hey what's up thanks for dropping by how's it going man thank you so much for for hopping in last night i'll check the bot to see why it's not posting for you yeah i don't know i mean it's not a huge deal but i do greatly appreciate it you know i really do appreciate the the extra love from the community but today is our sunday stream yeah it's our dog editing day um might do a little bit of elite later i'm kind of missing it i don't know i don't know why i haven't really got to play it since last week my work weeks are insane not for long though not for long um good face shot again i really like that they got beautiful orange blossoms on top of them but dogs are not that tall and i cannot get them far enough away for any of that to make any sense but something to think about if you decide to go out shooting is think of that environment and what you plan on shooting like this is terrible this is awful outside of this being really the only shot i could use for a body shot this is awful half almost half this picture is white pavement I say white pavement, it's gray pavement. You know what I mean. It's got all this junk up here. It's got an air conditioner unit. It's got a chair. It's got, I think that's an antenna, a radio antenna of some kind, and some kind of cra It's awful. If you're looking for good compositions, it's just awful. It's distracting. Don't do that. But if you can, you know, here's another one. Same deal. Same position. This is, oh, this is the same photo. It's just with the leash. Again, with this particular dog, she was, it's really difficult to photograph in the first place so we just kind of did what we could with what we had um, but think about your composition check out your lighting um, if you're using an on-camera flash actually here's a thought other than using a flash if you want if you want to try it go to a local art store and get yourself a piece of white foam core you know the ones like you see in yard signs and crap just, you know, three foot by two foot piece of white foam core of some kind. It has to be pretty durable, though. You want it to be durable just in case it gets a little windy. Bring a friend along and go to take a picture of any thing, person, animal, it doesn't matter, outdoors. Get in the afternoon sun, and depending on where you are, by the equator, the time's going to vary. You, you probably know what golden hour is if you don't. Google it. It'll come up for your time zone. It doesn't necessarily have to be golden hour, but of course that's that's a really good time. Um, and use that as a reflector. So what you want is you, the subject, and the sun. So the sun will be behind them. It can even well I say it can be in the frame. If you don't really understand your camera that well, it might be a little tricky. But you can do it that way. Get the sun behind them, and it'll put this lovely glow on them. And you're going to use that that white panel to bounce that light back in front of them and it'll lighten them up it won't be as as light as the halo around them but you'll you'll lighten up the front of them enough that you can see the face see the details and things of that nature um again i don't do a lot of outdoor photography um, it's just not really my thing i do a lot of it for the animals and the dogs but it's very situational it's very fast paced we're working very limited space so it's just kind of get them out crouch down and I'm just constantly just sitting on them waiting for them to get that pose that I want and click and waiting for them click click and then we're done um you gotta head into work it's, you have to go well thank you I appreciate that <laughs> no I completely got what you mean I appreciate you dropping by um thanks for doing that uh, Sundays are always our puppy streams if you like doing a puppy thing and talking about the dogs rescues animals fostering or even a little bit of tech stuff with the cameras like we're doing today you can always catch me at 3 p.m on Sundays today it was a little early because of the work thing Mondays is my variety day we might play elite might play something else that starts at noon central time and then Monday or Tuesdays is dedicated elite starts at noon as well so hit that follow button catch me then love to see you 
I'll to stop by and see some more of your stuff as well. I really enjoyed that. I was going to show you guys, I told you that if we got done early enough, I would show you a little bit of my studio work and some of my art style. I still, wow, oh, that music's a bit loud. Love Justin's stuff, but sometimes it can be just a bit too much. I don't really have, I was going to put together a folder of my stuff, so to speak. So that, you know, if somebody was asking about something, my, what I do or my style or whatever, I had a place I can go and just pull them up. But unfortunately, I haven't done that yet. Um, but let me browse over here and see if I can quickly find a few things. Maybe it's even some stuff like I showed last time on the stream. Sessions. Oh, I have... I would hate to think how many pictures I have between my machine, my backup drive, and my archive drive. It's got to be insane, the amount of photographs that I have. And it is being very slow to render. It's probably because of all the bazillion stuff I have open. That looks awful. I don't know what happened with that window. It's like it's selected. You see that blue background? Let's open that with something else. I don't know what's up with that. Windows being super exciting. Open with, what else can we open that with? That was photos. We want. I don't want to do that again. I guess we could do it with photo, Photoshop. So this is Godiva. This is, this is pretty much my style. And this is in color. I also really like black and white. Um, but it's usually low-key stuff. Um, this is studio work. This is a... Uh, I have... The way I shoot animals... The way I shoot... That sounds so terrible. The way I photograph animals <laughs> is typically with three lights. I have my primary light setup is I use a... Th I think it's the 36-inch. I'm really going to have to check that because I'm sure I've said different sizes at different times. But it's a, it is a 36-inch beauty dish with the diffuser on it. As my... Usually it's set up as my key light. And then I have two 1x4 gridded and diffused soft boxes on the left side and on the right side. And then what I do with the, when, when the animals come in and they're being posed, because, you know, unless they've been trained for it, it's tough sometimes to pose an animal. I use a radio control on top of my camera to turn off up or down lights as they reposition themselves. So in this particular instance, it looks like they rotated to my left and were looking off, like completely off the, the studio section into the, probably towards the door. I think the door was over that way. And you can go in and try to move the dog and finagle them. You're just going to get frustrated with it. So instead, I turned off my beauty dish. I turned off the right side grid and I just left the left side on. I took my whole body and slid over to the left and clicked. And that gave me the shot. So all you're seeing is right here in the eyes is this one by four, this one by four grid. If you get really close, you can even see this. Yeah, you can even see the grid in it. Um, and it, like I said, don't be scared of this stuff. It is not as hard as you might think. Once you kind of play with it and get an understanding for your equipment and what it can accomplish, and you're going to make mistakes as part of learning. You know, don't worry about that. And I can hardly see a lot of these thumbnails. Let me let me try to make them larger. Extra large icon. They sh that should say old people, old people's icons, right, KT? Is that what that should say? I'm sure you got something in there. Dang it, it keeps. Oh, I don't know what is up with Photo Viewer, but it's 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 totally flipping. Wow, I don't know what the world that that went. when I went full screen with it, it looked beautiful. But in this windowed box, it's it's doing something insane. I don't know what. Probably needs a reboot. I rarely rarely turn this thing off. Open with Photoshop. Um, this is the same setup. This is the same background. This is the same everything. The only difference is here. You see this, what we got? And you can tell a lot about how a photo was shot by the light you see. And the catch light in the eyes can also tell you that. Here, you see that? That's some beauty dish. It's a circle. And because I've got this rim light here, 
you can tell with the beauty dish, the beauty dish was almost straight over here. So it was between me and, and Godiva. On the right side, you can actually see it right there. There's that one by four grid. It's sitting off to the right and the left side is turned off. So again, it depends on how they're positioned. Um, and I use a radio control and you just kind of get quick at it. They position, you see the shot in your head, you change the light appropriately, but bam, shoot it. Photograph it however you would like to pronounce it. <laughs> it just sounds so bad to say shoot. Um, this is more of my styles, the moody, low-key stuff. I, I love a picture, a photograph, image, however you prefer to, to reference it, that makes you think about more than what is in the picture, but what the picture might be about or what was going on. Something's like, oh, wow, it's a dog. It's pretty. Here, it's a good eye again. Um, here, I think we're just doing a beauty dish above the head. Um, it might even be gridded looking at it. I don't think so. I don't think that was gridded. I must have had the power really low on it. Uh, but this is the moody shot. You don't see eyes because her eyes are closed, but it's kind of that sleeping puppy thing. And this is just, this is paper, this background, black paper. Um, you can get it in big rolls. I have it in, it's, uh, I think it's 12 foot long by like 40, or 12 foot wide by 40 foot long. And this, and, and this is my old studio, they hung on the walls and you pull them down with chains and whatnot. You can get those setups really cheap too if you got a safe place to mount them. Um, you can get them on Amazon, on rollers and the paper's not that cheap and I think it's mostly the shipping that kicks your butt. But. Um, this is a lot still of the same dog. Those are all nests. We're gonna back up, find another puppy. Oh, we've got some cats in here. We've got people in here. A little bit of everything. This is our Gracie. That's a NIF file. That's not going to open well. But then again, the thing wasn't open in TIFF files either. I don't even know what that's going to open in. I've never opened a NIF file, which is Nikon's raw format. I never just opened it by double clicking on it. It opens in Photoshop, and it's going to open a raw converter, and believe me, we don't want to go through that mess. Um, Fudge Brownie. This was one of my first studio shots for the shelter, studio shoots for the shelter specifically. Uh, and this is where I actually started to get a feel for the way that I wanted to photograph animals. And let me go through 10 different windows because the photo viewer is not wanting... That's going to do enough. It's going to do a raw converter. I didn't know that was enough. I have some in here that are not, I know, of fudge brownie. There they are at the bottom. They just haven't rendered yet. Open with Photoshop. That is not what I clicked on. Anyway... You can probably just get the gist from the damn raw thing. Um, but this is Fudge Brownie, and here I was kind of playing with light, lights and trying to figure out how I wanted to how I wanted to photograph my animals. Now my problem now that I would have with this particular image is that there's no catch light in the eyes to speak of. They look like black dead holes. Eyes bring photos to life. And it doesn't have to be much to, to bring it to life. Um, like there was a great one of Lee. And I'm just going to filter this by TIFF files so I can stop seeing and rendering everything in the, under the sun. I say that. I put TIFF in the search box and the windows sit here like so. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's killing me. Um, Lee. I really need to get this stuff into a folder instead of making this long, awkward silences. Um, and I'm going, I promise I will someday, very soon. I will do that. Uh, open with Photoshop. So this was Lee. 
And this is what I mean by you don't have to have much light in the eyes, but when you what you do has to count. Um, now, I, now this one I would play right down the middle as far as why it's good and why it's bad to me. I love this shot. This is a single light shot. This is a one by four grid, I believe. Yep, tell by the reflection in the eye. See the big square. That's a one by four grid. It's just the one light. It is off to his right. He looked off to the right. I probably turned off the main, the, what I was using for a key light, which is a beauty dish, the other grid, and just left that one on and shot a few pictures. What I got was two things. Again, there's not much of the eye here, but there's two that count. The color of the eye and the, and the catch light in the eye, which makes this picture in print, because I have seen it printed, absolutely stunning. The only thing I don't like about this is I missed the other eye. I like to have see a little bit of the other eye across here. I don't want a profile shot. My style, my art, I don't like the profile without catching the other eye. Um, and I don't think it was Lee. I was looking at these the other day and I was like, oh wow, well that's, a, that's, that's what I'm talking about, catching that other eye. But at this point, I don't remember who it was. Maybe if I get out of the sessions and go to export, so I'll get more of what I'm looking for here. Julia, um, she was also one of my earlier shots when I was still developing kind of the style of what I liked in animals. This is it's this exact same setup as I shot the rest with. It's three lights. It's a 38 inch, I think, beauty dish, and then the two, uh, the two side lights. Oh man, two more followers. Please spread the word. Jackson wants lap time. Yeah, um, we're going to do that. If you've not been here before, thank you for being here. If you haven't hit that follow button, please do. I do this exact stream every Sunday. Um, Mondays we do some gaming. Tuesdays we do some gaming. Um, but now since we've hit 50 followers, Jackson, who is not in here currently, actually I don't know why he's not, uh, is our 140 pound Great Dane. And the 50 follower goal is that he's going to sit in my lap on the couch that you probably really can't see that's behind me. It'll be blurry because I don't autofocus that camera. But that couch there behind me, and I'm going to set up my other camera for that. He's going to come up and sit in my lap. It shows 48. Yes, the, the goal thing on the bottom left is wrong. If you want to know the real viewer or the real follower count, look above this video. That'll tell you. Unless I've lost a few since then, which could very well happen as well. But the last time I checked, it was actually 50 at the top. I don't know why that, that on-screen one is is being the way it is. I don't know why it's only showing 48, but what do you do? Um, go back to... Oh my gosh, I was so glad. I might be changing my streaming software. I very well might be. Um, and I've got so much crap. <laughs> Even finding out where in the world I'm going half the time, I'm lucky I can do it. So with this one here, again, this is back... Oh, thank you. Uh, when I was still pretty new to the animals and trying to figure out the web, best way to light them and how their fur color played into it and eye color and lighting. So one thing you'll notice here, and this is personal preference as to whether or not so I listened to myself on that other stream. I sound odd. Oh, on the um, that POE stream we did the other day with uh, Mr. Big Rick. Is that the one you're talking about? And I'm here to tell you, I don't care who you are, and I don't care what kind of voice you have, whether you have a great voice or a terrible voice. Hearing yourself speak is the strangest thing ever. You'll, you'll never like it, so don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Uh, the light in the eyes. So you'll see this big old 36 inch beauty dish, which is diffused, throwing the light on Julia's face here. But you'll also notice that her eyes are wide open, super dilated, right? If you want to close that down and show more color, which is actually and typically preferred in most cases, Depends on your style and what you're shooting for. 
sorry, dryer. You want, that's actually my work clothes, which I'm glad they're drying because I get that phone call here shortly. If you keep a bright light in their eyes, like if you want to use a constant light, like an LED or something, they'll shut down and you'll get to see a lot of that beautiful color. But since I'm using all flashes, actually the lights that I have on this camera, on this in the studio right now, in this office, are my constant lights for photography. Um, they're actually on their dimmest settings and they're blinding the hell out of me right now. Uh, but they're, they're, they're actually down below, I think, in my production equipment. Not very expensive. Remote control, I can, uh, I can come up and turn them off and on right here from sitting at my desk. Um, the background lights are also remote control, but they're a little more janky, I guess you would call it. I have to really point in to get it to work. But anyway, yeah, if you want more to show more color in the eyes, then use a constant or just use a brighter room. Just be careful with what color of light that you're using or make sure you're outpacing it with your shutter speed. Um, so you can, the best way I can explain to do that is place the subject in the room, get the lighting set up as far as ambient light, the way you want so that their pupils are dilated or not as dilated as you want. Get on your camera, no flashes, keep adjusting your, uh, well, set your aperture kind of where you'd like to have it and then keep upping your shutter speed, given that your flash will support high speed sync, because sometimes you'll need that if your lights are really bright. Keep cranking up your shutter speed and take a picture and take a picture and keep doing that until your screen's black. Just barely all black. Then throw your flashes in and set your flashes to get the exposure you want. Then you do the same thing as the equivalent of taking a picture after dark or at nighttime. Get super dilate, you know, super tweaked down eyes. Get all that beautiful color out of there and use a flash. So that is something you can do if, if, you, if you want that kind of effect. Um, I haven't done a lot of that. I know how to do it. Um, it's just not something I've had a call for, really. Um, more pictures here, which I'm positive I have. Again, I know I have a lot of pictures. They're just, as far as finding them, kind of like this is not how I archive them. So I've got to kind of poke at them. Uh, Chispa, which is another rescue animal. I oh, did this quite some time ago. Open with... Photoshop. Um, same style. This is actually her. This is Chispa. When I said about catching both eyes, make the light that you catch the right light to set it off. I think this is an absolute beautiful picture of her. And I guess I could actually blow it up enough so it's not super tiny for you guys. Uh, black with tan spots. And she had these beautiful brown eyes. And I caught both eyes. That to me, that's, that's just money right there. That is just money. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And this is my style of art. This is my style of art. In this and in black and white. And I do have some black and white stuff coming up. I get lucky on the outdoor stuff from time to time and get some nice shots. Uh, but in general, I'm a studio guy. Um, I just, I, I prefer the studio work. I like the more controlled light. I like the low key. You can do low key outdoor as well just not my thing outdoor shot here this was at an event um she had brought her golden retriever down said "Dad, take my picture so we did super sweet nice gal too um what else do we have in here um for those of you that are cat lovers we have some of that here open with um, this is my style again. This is low key black background. This is black and white. This cat and I think one or two others. I think it was two others, maybe three. Been a while since I looked, and I meant to pull this together. I have I put together what I call the rescue what I called the rescue collection, and it's a collection of about I think fourteen animals, all shelter animals, not adopted, homeless essentially shelter animals. I shot them all over the course of last year. I shot the photographs. Still, uh, that's terrible coming out. I'm in the habit of saying shoot this, shoot that for photography, but when I say it together, it sounds terrible, especially if you don't if you don't use it in your regular lingo. But anyway, so it's about, uh, I don't know, I, I said 14 or so pictures, all done like this, low key, black and white, all animals. The shelter that I volunteer at 
took that shelter collection, had them all professionally printed on a 24 by 36 inch foam core black mat in black and white, hung them all over their brand new wellness center facility up there. They look so damn good. It's, it's crazy. I never would have thought how good they looked. They look awesome. And the people that come in get to enjoy not only my art, but they get to see all the animals that came from that shelter. Every one of them came from that shelter. Um, here's another cat. Again, I'm not saying this is some, oh my gosh, look at how impressive my work is. It is not. My work is actually fairly simple, but you would be surprised how difficult it can be to create something that looks so simple. Um, another cat, same style. Oh, I don't want to do that. Um, low key, both eyes, fairly close to the same pose, which was actually a bit of luck there that that happened. Um, this cat, these both these cats were being fostered. They were from that shelter, but they were being fostered by the same gal. Um, she brought them both up. What else do I have in here? Uh, people with the dogs. Got those as well. Um, this is my niece. And her husky. Her crazy husky. Um, beautiful blue eyes. The huskies are absolutely beautiful. They're just crazy, in my opinion. They're nuts. They're psycho. They scream when they get upset. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's scary. It's a scary thing. Um, here's another husky. This is an outdoor. This is a shelter shot. This is just going out like we've been doing. We take pictures. Uh, but it's in this particular folder for some reason or another. Um, it's another husky. Beautiful. That, that picture is very yellow for one reason or another. It might have been, must have been storming that day and I didn't white balance it right or something to that effect. But I'm sure. Beautiful husky. Beautiful blue eyes. They're crazy though. Insane in the membrane. Um... Kitten, yeah. That's not that impressive in my opinion. Uh, zoo animals, just going to the zoo though. I, I, I have offered to one of the local nonprofit zoos to, to go in and photograph for them for their outreach programs. I haven't heard from them. I guess they got that covered. I don't know. Uh, but this was, uh, this is the Austin Zoo, which is a nonprofit zoo. Um, and this is a fox that was out there. And if you guys caught my stream before, I think I showed this one as well. Um, there's a fox, and I'm gonna just skip through some of them. I just wish there was an easier way to do this, but since the photo thing is screwed up, the photo viewer, I have to manually go through all the menus to get open Photoshop. Bobcat. And this was all natural. I wasn't using any flashes on this at the zoo because it can spook the animals. Open with, and it moves, seems like, every time on the menus. Um, no flash. This is just catch light from outside. And actually, if you pay close attention to where you're shooting at, you can do this, too. I did it by somewhat by accident, and I say that because this tiger was so far away from me, I couldn't even really make out its eyes in the first place. But this tiger is sitting about 300 yards from me. At least. I'm using a, that, that Tamron 70 to 200 at 200 millimeters in FX mode. Thinking back on it, I should have switched to DX mode. I would have got it 400. But here nor there. Zoomed all the way. This is heavily, heavily, heavily cropped. I mean heavily cropped. I'm, I don't have the original in front of me here. I'd show you how cropped it was. But the tiger was sitting inside of what was like an external building a small building, bigger than a dog house, but smaller than a shed kind of thing. And it was block brick and it had a top on the bottom of it. Well, the way the sun was shining, it was shining in the door and bouncing off the concrete in front of the tiger and hitting them, hitting their face. And that's how I got this beautiful glow on the front of their face with that catch light in their eye. Um, but yeah, don't, you know, sometimes it's just a matter of getting lucky, you know.
you're getting that that one shot you just got to get it get out there and shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot and you, you'll get an I really got to get those out of the dryer soon. But you'll get a knack for what you like and what you like in your art. Don't let anyone tell you what is right or what is wrong. It is your art. So you do what you see fit with it. My personal suggestion when it comes to art is do whatever you like to see in your art. But just be consistent about it. Make sure there's a consistency to it because that's what defines you. Where are you going to? I know, but where to? Sorry, my wife, share, bear with me just a second. She wants to, she's asking me something. Okay, sorry. I apologize about that. She was. I thought she was going to get food, and I was like, well, where are you going? I want to know where you're going. She said, no, the food is ready, so apparently she's already made something. So we're gonna go handle that here in a few minutes. Uh, but what I was saying about art or photography, what did my art, photo photography, painting, you know, work with your hands, welding, whatever your style is, do it. There's not enough art in the world in my opinion. Um, I've done some kind of artwork my entire life, whether that's photography, whether that's drawing, I never did much painting. Did a lot of drawing, uh, design, graphics design, web stuff, you know, whatever your craft is, just do it. And something I'll never forget um, that I had an English teacher. I don't think it was an English teacher. I don't think it was my art teacher. I'm pretty sure it was an English teacher. I'll never forget the term, although I forgot who in the hell told me. And that's kind of bad. But, you know, when you think about writing a story or a book or creating a painting or taking a, a pictures or trying to put together a collection of pictures, what makes me so special? Why should I do this? My, my stuff sucks anyway. You know, it's not that great. No one's going to fall over, themse all over themselves for it. I'm not going to make a killing on it. And you probably won't. But <clears throat> there's only one person on the planet qualified to make your art, and that is you. It's a very unique perspective. Everybody grows up differently. They have different environments. They have different life-changing events. Different things happen to them. And it defines your perception on the planet and on everything that happens to you. So doing what you do through that tunnel, if you will, is what makes your art uniquely yours. Look at any great artists through history and read about their backgrounds. If you're not familiar with a lot of them, you'll find out how absolutely screwed up they were. But it's that background that gave them that unique perspective on their art. And it's the same with you, doing your art. It's your, your unique view of that situation or of that product or medium or whatever that is. So don't be afraid of that. You do it, you do it passionately and enjoy it. And that's, that's the purpose. That's the whole purpose in art is to get out there and do it and let people see it, share it. Art is nothing if it's not shared. My stuff is terrible, but here I am sharing it. I'm using the dogs as a bit of an excuse, but I'm also advocating for them as well. So it helps. Um, again, my stuff isn't that knockout fantastic. Um, puppies, this is more of a regular studio type of shot. Puppies with a little bit of Christmas cheer going on here. They were so damn cute. Totally adorable. Um, it doesn't look like there's any more. Totally unrelated topic, but given that I just found it and I've been looking for this picture for a while and I'll probably forget where it is tomorrow. This is my old show card. <laughs> this was my charger, my RT charger that I, I used to show. Uh, won a lot of first place with it. Love that car. Unfortunately, it collected too much dust and cost entirely too much money to let it collect dust, so I ended up getting rid of it. But uh, that was a weird place for that picture to be, but I seen it. I was, hey, now I've got it on a stream. I can always find it. Um, junk. I got so much in here. It, it's just, it's insane. Um, I'll show you some quick of some people models. I've showed these last time as well. Um, and then I've really got to go eat. Uh, but this is, and my models all sign releases they all know i use their work for promotional stuff and i promote my models as well that's what i do they're great people i wouldn't work with them if they weren't and this is mckinley hill this was a form type of formal shoot 
and actually I guess the black and white is going to open in the right color. Um, this was more of a kind of a Valentine's Day look. Um, again, this is my low key, my low key work in black and white I really like. Again, I like things that tell stories beyond what you're looking at. I want you to think more than just the subject matter. I want you to think about what they're doing, what they're looking at, what they're seeing, thinking, feeling, wh whatever. Anything besides, oh, hey, that's a cool picture. Um, that, in my art, that's what I like to see. I don't always get it, and I don't always get to shoot that way. But in my work, that's what I prefer to see. Um, more in the color realm, this is the same outfit. Um, you know, this is a touched up photo. Um, this is what I used in published work. She used it for her portfolio work. I published it as well for advertising and marketing purposes. Um, really lovely gal, McKinley Hill out of Austin, Texas, if you ever need a model. Um, she's a wonderful gal to work with, a lot of fun, super funny. Um, you can catch her on Instagram. Again, it's McKinley Hill. You can find her on Instagram. You'll also find some of these pictures as well as others that she's taken with other photographers. She does a lot of modeling work. Uh, more of the vintage scene here. Vintage look, the colors. Um, oh, I had the one of her. Oh, I did say the earring. She had brought an earring from a friend of hers that makes earrings. And she really wanted a picture showing it off. So we did that as well. A little bit of somewhat jewelry product photography sort of thing. Which I've, honestly, this is probably the closest thing to product photography I've ever done. Um, but... Again, once you kind of understand your equipment and what you're working with, it's not a huge deal to finagle out of something what you want. It may take a few tries and it may take a few shots, but you'll get it. So again, don't be intimidated. Get that stuff out there and do it. Um, formal wear. Uh, open with, open with. Where the hell did it go to now? There it is. Photoshop. Um, again, low light, low key, black background. It says it, it's a, it's not really about the dress. It's about the mood that the whole thing sets up for me. It's a formal look. It is a beautiful dress. It's got sequins and stuff on it. But it's about, you know, what's going on? What is she thinking? What is she doing? Where is she headed? It's more than just the picture is what I try to capture. I try to capture kind of a mood or a feeling um, and, and it's art is art you get out of it what you get out of it and that's kind of the purpose it's for each viewer to determine on their own what they would like what they would like that to mean um, hopefully there's somewhat of what I was trying to get across in there as well um, another one heard this space shot this is more of a beauty look it's again it's dramatic lighting soft lighting um, this I believe is this is a beauty dish. I might have a small kicker off to the right. I don't really remember. The shoot's been a while back. Um, one more in that outfit. I haven't got that phone call yet. I'm super excited about that. Um, again, this is that same. This is the same thing as this. It's just as she turned the other way. Get that over the shoulder look. Um, if I had that to do over again, I would probably close a little more of this gap and have her extend her chin some more to kind of make these. See how there's this like abrupt change in lines right here? I would smooth that line out right there. That that's the only thing I would really change with that picture. And it looks really good in black and white as well. Or you could antique it and really get that vintage look out of it. Either, you know, again, it depends on your style and what you like and what you want to get out of it. Um, I think she had two other looks. I'll look through a couple of those and then really I do have to... We, actually, we already looked at the Valentine's look. I could show you a couple more shots if you want. Just because she, she looks absolutely stunning in some of those uh, outfits and with that lighting. Um, just loved it. Um, she has a very, a very unique stare, like in this picture, the way she can look at the camera. It's very unique. I think I showed this one, I'm not sure. Maybe I didn't. Um, this one's a little heavier on the makeup. This is more of a, a, a commercial style shot. You might find it in an ad, you know, maybe there would be some jewelry on her neck or whatever.
this and this one here is more of the again with the theme of the mood how you want to kind of set a mood and, and ask you know that damn buzzer you know what's going on why 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 is this posed this way and what is she looking at and what's you know again when you ask more than just oh hey that's a good picture then my goal is accomplished that's what i try to get out of those um i think there's one more outfit for her and i do have other models and guys as well if you're curious about seeing that stuff maybe catch me on the next stream and we'll it's like hey i'd really like to see some of your guy pictures i'm happy to do that uh this is also mckinley this was a more of a senior theme uh it's using marketing and advertising uh, for the senior look again black and white super smooth silky just a real buttery feel to it but she's wearing jeans you know more of a casual sort of style um, again more of the senior pose here my my work i like to think anyway is my work tends to fall more into probably more into the fine art category just because i don't use very many props very rarely so mine and it's still a work in progress very much a work in progress but mine is about posture pose lighting lighting being one of the big deals to it and mood um, is really what i try to set up in my artwork so it's more like uh lighting with shapes than it is about the subject directly um, of course you always want the light to enhance your subject but you kind of get what i mean that that's that's my style that's what i do another senior picture style um, again all black my style all black i shoot on black all the time some people might say oh well that's cheating you don't have to do this you don't have to I don't care call it's whatever you want to call it it's my art this is what I do and I love I have whites I have grays I have outdoors I have that if you really want to see that kind of artwork or that kind of photography just not my thing though um, it's really not what I do and if you want to do you know if you want to shoot animals if you want to photograph animals I still hate the way that sounds you know if it's something what we did with our our shelter is we volunteered to go in there and photograph the animals which we do and you can do that and if it's a lot of animals you want to do that but then if you really get excited about it and you have a small space you can use you can set up as a studio i highly advise trying that as well and say hey i've got this little space set up as a studio it's not that far from here i think there's a time we could set up where one of your other volunteers or staff members or myself could come up and pick up the animal and take it over to the studio and get some studio work and bring it back odds are at least when they're comfortable enough with you they'll let you do that or they'll ask someone to help you with that and then you can come and do the studio work like I was showing you earlier and start practicing with that, start trying with that. And maybe that'll lead into other things. Maybe you'll accidentally take some shots that define your art style or make you decide, you know what, I hate studio work, I want to be outside. Or I hate being outside, I don't want to be in the studio. Um, so experiment, you know, experiment, try it out, see what you like. I've tried a lot of different stuff. <laughs> and there's a lot of stuff I wouldn't say that I don't like, but a lot of stuff that I'm just not that great at, so I just assume not to it. Again, not that I'm that spectacular with all this either, but this is the kind of art I really like to create. And that's a color version of that other one. And other than that, that was the three looks for her. Yeah, and I mean, I have other models and stuff, so sometime, you know, whenever, uh, sometime whenever we have more time or, or it, it, one the, the next Sunday, Okay, next Sunday, we hit our 50 follower goal. I'm pretty sure it still says that above my head. I know it doesn't say it on screen. But our 50 follower goal was to let Jackson, my 140-pound Great Dane, sit on my lap. Well, amazingly enough, with you great people and supporting me, we finally hit that. We've only been streaming a little over a month now. Um, so I'm absolutely hyped about that. But he gets to sit in my lap. It's going to happen right behind me on this. There's a couch behind me. I still got to get all the cameras and stuff set up. But we are going to do that next Sunday at 3 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. I will put that out on Twitter. If you haven't followed me on Twitter, nine times out of ten, if something changes or is up with my schedule, I will post it there first. Or if I just shoot out, hey, you know, just curious what we should do on Variety Day. And you're welcome to say, hey, well, we should try this or try that or whatever. I'm definitely out here to, to help. I want to stream what you guys like to see. But fits within the realm of, you know, kind of the chill stuff we do around here. Um, you know, we do gaming on Mondays. We do gaming on Tuesdays. We do photography on Sundays. We may get 
another day or two here before long i'm going to be able to stream more off schedule my schedule is finally going to free free up reddit detective thank you so much for the follow i greatly appreciate that um but you know it's something that i love doing i love sharing with the community i like i love the photography i do i do professionally i do it professionally on the side if that makes sense it's, it's a professional hobby um i do it mostly for commercial places actually and models and things of that nature um now I work a full-time nine-to-five job. I wish it was nine-to-five, but you know what I mean. Um, I also do consulting work. Uh, my plate is way too full. I do the streaming stuff three days a week. I love, love, love doing the streaming. Um, I like interacting with you guys. I like sharing the love. I like talking about the animals and the photography and the technical stuff on the Sundays. I like the the variety stuff we do um, sometimes on Mondays. I like the Elite Dangerous community in general. We play a lot of Elite Dangerous. If you're into sci-fi and you have not checked that game out, even if you're not a gamer, come along for the ride sometime we have a shitload of fun we do a lot of talking about this and that and the other it doesn't always pertain to the game as as many of you that have been here before can attest uh but we have a great time with it and and i'm super excited about what's coming down the road and, and the things that are coming and some of the cool production stuff i got coming um i'm just really having a blast with it and i'm glad you guys are here uh here for the ride I typically raid after I stream. However, for the art community, I'm not real for sure where in the world to send you guys. Would you guys like to raid somebody? Do you know somebody else doing art? I follow very few people in the art category only because it's very, very out there, very different um, as far as styles and who does what and when and where. So I don't know many of them. If you would like to raid someone else in the art category in particular, you let me know. Otherwise, I'm gonna go over here and if I can find the right window out of the 5,000 windows I have open, I'm gonna find a someone to raid. Let's see, art is what we want, the art category. And it would be nice to find someone else doing some kind of photography work or animal uh, type of advocacy. Uh, it would be difficult to find out who and where. Um, or would you guys rather go raid someone in the elite community? I know a, a vast majority of my followers are also elite dangerous players. So we can also do that if you would like. Uh, try to find someone that I think... It's going to be really hard to say. Because we've got about... Uh, we only got about six, seven, eight viewers. And I like to kind of raid someone else that's around that as well. Kind of spread the love... Back at it again after major fail. What is she doing? Is she drawing? It looks like she is. Um, she has 10 viewers. Uh, I don't know. Again, I don't know her. I'm hoping, please forgive me if it ends up being a bad raid. I hope it doesn't. And I'm sure it won't. But we are going to raid Carabees. Carabees? I'm not even sure how you pronounce it. You know, I'm terrible. I'm a terrible streamer. Um channel perhaps maybe live find a channel to raid there she be and again i'm not sure what she's doing or if she's drawing or painting but it looks kind of cool so come along with me raid just say hi how you doing show some love from 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 bait shop and and the and the, and the puppies and the artwork photography um that we do hang out for a minute you know to stay long just to say hi you know maybe throw them a follow if you really like what they're doing i will as well um again i don't i don't know them and uh please hit a follow here if you haven't already you can catch me on twitter if you like the live updates and we are gonna we might stream some elite later tonight possibly um and we will definitely be streaming some kind of game tomorrow at at noon central standard time and then monday we will be no tomorrow is monday tuesday we'll be streaming that's such a weird ass schedule at noon as well elite so we're gonna go over there and say hi to her and this is gonna take care of a few seconds about nine seconds or so but uh, I really again thank you so much for being here I super super appreciate it I wouldn't be here without you guys find all my scenes here uh, but go over and say hi and again throw a follow if you really like her I really appreciate it thank you for being here we'll see you next time